For two years, the Eagles have had local bragging rights over the Lightning. It's sure to be a typical heated backyard skirmish, and I'm not talking just about the weather. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to North Stadium. I'm Bill Rogan along with Justin Adams for today's game between the Broomfield Eagles and the Legacy Lightning. And Justin, both of these teams had challenging opening weeks. They both lost. That makes this game incredibly important. Bill, you don't want to start a season 2-0 if you have championship expectations, and that's what these two teams have. No way can you lose this game if you're either of these squads. And Broomfield lost to Pomona, no shame there, but that's a game they could have won. And Legacy, they went down to Florida, got beat pretty bad. It was a great learning experience for them. And this is a game, Justin, not only both teams 0-1, they don't want to go 0-2, and the local rivalry aspect never want to lose against your rival and that's what has happened the last two times two gut-wrenching heartbreaking losses that legacy had um, and Broomfield won the last one on a field goal of all things very very tough right now for legacy this is a must-win game for them especially for bragging rights in the Broomfield area first week you can expect mistakes and penalties turnovers that's what happened to these two teams they need to clean that up if they want to win today well, both teams had a lot of turnovers Broomfield had 14 penalties built really hurt them especially in the fourth quarter against Pomona they had a 14 to 6 lead gave up 15 points penalties were very huge there and then if you're looking on the other side for legacy they had their problems also mostly they had their problems on defense giving up 544 rushing yards and six touchdowns on the ground last week both teams need to clean up it's awfully hot, temperatures in the 90s. This is an artificial turf surface. Add 15 to 20 degrees to that. How will that affect the game? Hydration is very important. You're going to see a lot of substitutions, especially from the Broomfield side. Coach uh, Davies talked about how he had a couple of linemen who play both ways, so they will be substituted a lot in this game just to keep them fresh, especially in the fourth quarter, because as we know in this rivalry, it will be a close game. Should be a close game, should be a lot of fun. Big 12 championship ring, pretty impressive. Starting lineups and the opening kickoff next. And we are seconds away from kickoff for today's game between the visiting Broomfield Eagles and the home team, the Legacy Lightning. Bill Rogan along with Justin Adams at North Stadium and fans on both sides are very excited. Hopefully they are hydrated and passing around the sunscreen as well. Legacy will kick off. They won the toss and elected to defer. And Justin Adams what do you have as far as weather? Just before kickoff, Bill, it's 89 degrees outside right now. It feels like 85 degrees, Bill, um, but it's the 23% humidity. It's, it's at least 100 degrees down on the field as the turf, as you're on the turf, 10 to 15 degrees hotter than it is uh, what the temperature actually says it is. So it's going to be very important that both teams hydrate throughout the game. Hunter Rainwater will kick off deep for Broomfield. Jordan Zhang and Jack Sherwood. And the rivalry is underway. Zhang has it at the one. Face mask. Zhang is tackled at the 18, but tack on an extra 15 yards on the face mask. Our officials today, the referee is Mark Usry. The umpire, Don Ray. The head linesman is Bob Chainhalt. The back judge, Rich Iverson, and the line judge is Bob Blodgett. So Broomfield will start out. Their quarterback is Alec McLean. The fullback, Zach Stodden. Tailback, Noah Tripp. The receivers, Simeon Combs and Dante Panacucci. The tight end, Michael Riston. And the big guys up front. The tackles, Gutierrez and Testerman. The guards, Horner and Gardner. Ty Leonard anchors the line at center. We'll have the legacy defense in a moment. First and 10, Broomfield starts out at the 33-yard line. In motion is Simeon Combs. 
and the give goes to the tailback and straight up the middle, picking up good yardage, is Tripp down the sideline, and he gets tripped up. Touchdown saving tackle by Nick Weaver, but a penalty marker on the play. Bill, this looks like it's going to come back. So two plays, two penalties, and we spoke, Justin, in the opening, these teams need to stay away from the mistakes that cost them last week. Well, yet again, Broomfield is hurting themselves, as you see on this run. Wide open hole, great run there by Tripp. But uh, it's for not, Bill, another penalty that hurts Broomfield. Remember what I said last week? They had 14 penalties for 88 negative yards. Really hurts you, especially on a play like that. Let's set the defense for Legacy. They play basically a 4-4. The defensive ends, Amadou and Baum, Ray and Medina tackles. The outside linebackers, Fawcett and Weaver, Martin and Burdick are the inside backers. Simmons and Rodriguez, the corners. Drew Hebel is the free safety, and he's a good one. So first and 20 on the holding penalty for Broomfield. And the give goes to the tailback, Zhang, and he picks up about seven yards. That'll bring up second down and about 15. I guess if it works well on the first play, why not do it again? A wide open hold there, open up for the line of Broomfield. Something that Coach Voorhees talked about earlier was stopping the run. Broomfield's looking to, to definitely uh, get the running plays down early in this game. Alec McLean, 6'4", 190. He is a senior. Ball at the 28-yard line of Broomfield. Over the middle, it's complete to Panacucci. Down to the 40-yard line of Legacy. First down, Broomfield. A pickup of about 30 yards. Our stat man is Connor Shreve. He'll give us the exact total. First and 10, Eagles at the 40-yard line. Going back to the replay, Bill, look at this throw by McLean. Great pass. They're on the slant route there to Panacucci, who takes the ball straight up field, gets tackled. On the stop the was to the, to Brandon the Simmons. Line. Yeah. A 32-yard gain. But that's what the running play, running plays do, is that they open up the passing lanes. So great call there by Coach Davies. Going deep. Pass is deflected. Excellent play by Quentin Rodriguez. Pass a little bit underthrown, but Rodriguez was there. And we have an injured eagle, the intended receiver. Looked like it was Panacucci. It, it was Panacucci, Bill. And as we, if we can look back at, back at this replay, I'm surprised that there's not a penalty here for a defenseless wide receiver. If we can look at it again, there is the, the pass, the play action pass, and, and just a deep route. Panacucci on a double route going deep. And as you can see, the ball is tipped. So therefore, there is no reason to hit this wide receiver afterwards, so that's Drew Hebel there. And I am shocked, especially with the way that football is being called today with concussions, that nothing was called, no 15-yard penalty was called there for a, for a legal hit. And that should have been a penalty, no question about it, Justin. Second down and 10. His legacy throwing some water bottles off the field. Trying to get the water girl off the field. Trip is the tailback. Going in motion is Combs. Trip has it. Big yardage. One man to beat. And Hebel able to take him down at the 15 yard line. A 25 yard scamper. And Broomfield moving the ball with little difficulty. Trip had 34 yards last week. I think he got that on that play alone. Great run there by Broomfield. A week ago, Pomona was trailing heading into the fourth quarter. They were down 14 to six, rallied to beat Broomfield 21 to 14 at Elizabeth Kennedy Stadium, the home field of the Broomfield Eagles. Legacy, they went to Florida and lost to Escambia of Florida by a score of 43 to 19 and they could not stop the run. We're seeing that so far early. And it looks like the wide out Combs moved. So another infraction, that'll send Broomfield back five yards. First and 15. 
Bill, let's not forget last week that Legacy had a real, real tough time stopping the run. Gave up over 500 yards on the ground and six touchdowns. Definitely something that Coach Davey saw on film and wants to exploit. Running the football, establishing the run early, and they're doing a great job. This is a good uniform matchup. Broomfield looks sharp in the all-whites with these striped socks and Legacy in the dark blue with gold helmets and pants. Trip through traffic gets taken down at the 17-yard line. Good tackle by Mitch Burdick. Well, the play's really made by Cooper Gardner, number 57. He's the right guard. He was the pulling guard on that last play. Got a real nice block on a linebacker. Opened up the hole there for Trip. Zhang comes into the game. And he goes into a slot left. Expect to pass here, Bill. Second down and 12. Pass is complete inside the 10 yard line. And it looks like it went to the tight end. It was Michael Riston, the tight end. I don't know about you, Justin, but these numbers that Broomfield has, pretty difficult to see, the silver on white. A little bit difficult to see, but obviously it's better uh, during the evening to see these numbers. But as you said earlier, it's a great uniform matchup. Third and five, ball just inside the 10-yard line of Legacy. Why not run the ball? Run it to the right. And here's the pitch. And Zhang gets taken down hard. Excellent play by the outside linebacker, Kyle Ray, blowing up that play. And it brings up a fourth down and nine. Gary Davies will send out the field goal unit. Travis Fries, a junior, will attempt it. Kyle Ray just got it to the chest of Michael Riston there. And there's nothing that you could do there as a tight end. The best thing you could do is either do a seal block as we have a timeout on the field. If we could take a look at that last replay, I'll tell you exactly what, what I mean if we could uh, look at that. Well, we'll take a look at the time. Okay, again, we look at the pitch, and as you can see, Kyle Ray with pursuit up the field, and there's nothing else that Michael um, Riston could do on that last play. What you want to do as a tight end is that anytime you have a pitch, we like to call it a seal block, which means that you cut, that you open up the outside and that you keep it there. The last thing that you want to have is any type of penetration, especially on that type of play. Unfortunately, that's what happened. Good play for uh, Michael Ray. I mean, not Michael Ray, but good Ray, play for Kyle Ray, excuse me, and uh, Legacy's defense. The snapper is Blake Witzel. The holder will be backup quarterback Logan McCormick. And Travis Fries will attempt a 35-yard field goal. Kick is on its way, and it is good. A 35-yard field goal by Travis Fries, and the Eagles strike first. Three-nothing Broomfield with 8.04 to go in the first quarter. Well, the big play was the 32-yard pass to Combs from McLean. So an impressive opening for the Eagles. And we also cannot forget about the big run there by uh, um, also by Tripp. By Tripp. 25-yard yes. run. All right, Justin, uh, the defensive coordinator for Legacy, Matt Craddock, He's got some work to do. What do you tell your defense on the sideline? The interior, off, the interior defense has to step up. You have to play sound. Sound gap defense is what they need to do. And try to get penetration. Kyle Ray did the right thing on that last play. Getting penetration upfield. If you're getting blown off the ball, it's going to be a long day for the Legacy Lightning. Ryan Tanagawa will kick off. The deep men for Legacy, Drew Hebel and Quentin Rodriguez. This is an artificial turf surface. Temperatures in the 90s. 
and it's about 15 to 20 degrees warmer on the field. So it's one of the things that you want to do. Get a team tired early, and one of the best ways to do it is to establish the running game. So Tanagawa will boot it away. High kick, and it's coming down to Rodriguez at the five. Going across the field. And he gets taken down. Penalty marker on the play. One of the Broomfield players, Noah Dome, lost his helmet. Nearly domeless. So we'll see what the call is. Zach Stodick looked like the tackler. Zach Stodick, the fullback. Stodden was a state wrestling champ last year for Broomfield. Speaking of which, Bill saw a, a good story this week about wrestling and the Olympics and how it's it, they're trying to fight their way back into the Olympics. That would be crazy if they eliminate that sport from the Olympics, one of the foundational sports going back to the first modern Olympics. But wrestling and football, you see a lot of good players uh, who wrestle and play football. The sports complement each other, especially if you're a lineman. So we have offsetting penalties. And the first look at the legacy offense. Their quarterback is Matt Lynch. Lynch, 6'2", 180-pound sophomore. Tailback is Tayton Petersian. And they'll spread it out. The H-back is Patrick Matthews. Receivers, Strafus and Van Valkenburg. And a delay on the field. Also, the tight end is Brody DeBoer. Up front, the tackles, Andrew LaGuardia, Connor Jennings, the guard, Xavier Taquinto, and Logan Lyons. Angela <coughs> Chavez is the center. I guess they're doing a re-kick here, Bill. Not sure why. But again, the previous penalties offset. All right, we get to see another kickoff. Not bad. Gives us a chance to give you the Broomfield defense real quick. Broomfield's defense. They go with Michael Riston and Austin Harris at the ends. Blake Witzel and Cooper Gardner are in the middle. The linebackers, Dom, Zissimos, and Hawkins. The corners, Takarante and Darus. And the safeties, Mackinich and Holbrook. Guy to keep an eye on is Zissimos. He had 13 tackles last week, led the team in tackles. Very, very excited to see this guy at work. And I should say Riley Derris, not Darus. Throw a penalty marker on myself there. Tanagawa will kick off again, so the previous play never happened. And it's coming down to Hebel this time at the three. And he gets hit hard at the 25-yard line and dropped like a sack of potatoes. Good special teams play by Angelo Alvarado. I'm looking forward to seeing Matt Lynch. Just a sophomore. Pretty good kid. Went 10 for 16 last week, had a touchdown pass. Only had 118 yards through the air, so interesting to see what this kid can do. Dual threat. And they'll open up with a pass. It's complete to Van Valkenburg, and he has first down yardage. Tackled on the play by Kyle Tacarante, the senior. So an 11-yard gain. It's always a confidence booster for a quarterback when he gets that first pass to be a completion. Especially to the short hands of Van Valkenburg. Just a quick stop route, four yards, come back to the ball, get the first down. Legacy lightning. Strafus in motion. Petersian. Now the keeper by Lynch. Faked me out. Lynch gets maybe a yard. That'll bring up second down and nine. Riston on the tackle. Remind you again, Bill, Van, um, Lynch, excuse me, he could run the football, had 79 yards and a touchdown on the ground. So he'll do both through the air and on the ground. Chavez the center, 5'11", 235. 
Heading in motion is Van Valkenburg. And Paterjan again. Has some blocking. Has a first down before he's taken out at midfield. Kyle Holbrook on the tackle. And so two first downs on this drive by the Lightning. Out of the pistol offense. Great run there by Paterjan. Quickly gets to the outside. Turns it upfield and gets 11 yards as we look there on the replay. Just great block it there by the line, but I just like the way that Paterji cuts it upfield, breaks the tackle, and just runs the ball, keeps the ball up, tucked up high. Pretty good tackle there. You know, I thought it was Broomfield that would be the team that would run the ball all over the place, but Legacy says uh, we got a little something up our sleeve. We could run the ball ourselves. Paterji again, up the middle, big yardage. Runs over a player inside the 30-yard line. He just ran over Riley Terrace. And the legacy crowd enjoying that play. You know, it, it, I see that play, Bill, but it's never good when you see the head linesman stand right there with a yellow flag under him because this play is coming back. Holding. Oh, Here's man. Here's where he runs oh, right over. Good God. <laughs> Riley Darris will remember that. But it's all for naught, a holding penalty against Legacy. And that is a backbreaker. Dayton Paterjan, 5'9", 205 pounds. He is a senior. So it'll be first and 20 for the Lightning. Ball resting on the 40-yard line, their own 40. Midway through the first quarter, it's 3-0 Broomfield. This the first possession for Legacy. Two men split to the left. If I'm co Coach Voorhees, I'm running the ball again. Lynch, outlet pass, complete to the tight end, who gets about five yards of that back. That's Patrick Matthews, actually the H back. So Matthews, a five-yard reception, second down and 15. And, Bill, the only reason why I say you want to continue to run the ball, yes, you got five yards there, but just think about what you will do against Broomfield. It's very hot out there. Um, you know, Broomfield doesn't have as many linemen as, uh, as Legacy has, so they will have to substitute a lot. So you really want to go and wear down the linemen if you can with the running game. Strafus in motion. Paterjan loses two. Nice defensive play. Cooper Gardner in there along with Blake Witzel. Great their play, uh, great play, excuse me, there by Gardner as he sniffed out what looked to be a counter play, as you see the fans there from Broomfield. A lot of a lot of fans come out in all white from Broomfield. Always great to see uh, your local school. Just you know, and just people come out and support each other. Third down, and call it 16. Lynch launching, and it is incomplete, but a penalty marker on the play. Pass intended for Jacob Royer. The officials will confer. I thought it was a catch. Let's take a look at this replay as Matt Lynch stands back there and just throws it up for grabs. To me, I thought it was a catch. You could clearly see the pass interference there as the DB didn't look back. Oh, no, no, at the last moment it was stripped. But great play by Legacy, and they're going to get a first down on a pass interference. Matt Lynch displaying a strong arm. And they'll mark it off. I believe that was Riley Darius on the coverage there. He, he just didn't turn his hair back, head back. Or his hair. Yeah, or his hair. Both. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll spot it at the Broomfield 41-yard line. So it's not an automatic first down because it was third and 16. So it's third and one. Turgeon straight up the middle, has the first down. Nice surge by the offensive line. 
Good block in there by Javier Tequinto. Also clearing some room was Andrew LaGuardia. LaGuardia, 6'3", 265. Good God, if you can't get a, a first down with somebody who's 265, I don't know what you're doing. His nickname is The Airport. He's so big. <laughs> there you go, Bill. I just gave it to him. <laughs> Petersian dances forward and is grabbed at the legs. He's brought down and a good tackle by Cooper Gardner. Love the way that the love the way Petersian is running the football. If he doesn't have 30 or more carries in his game, then I don't think Legacy can win. But if he does have 30 or more, then it'll be a great thing for him. He's going to wear down this defense. I like the way that he's running so far. Second down and six. Ball at the 34-yard line of Broomfield. Again, Petersian bounces it off tackle. Down to the 30-yard line. Witzel on the stop. Also getting his nose in there, Matt Hawkins. That'll bring up a key third down. Third and three, ball at the 30-yard line. Under four minutes to go, first quarter. I was at a game last night, Englewood and Arvada. Oh, yeah. First quarter took 55 minutes to play. Oh, good God. Petersian, first down and more. One man to beat. And he gets inside the 10, down to about the six yard line. A 24 yard run. And Petersian is chewing up some yardage. I'm loving the way this guy is running the football. Six carries, 50 yards. And we'll take another look, Justin Adams. Well, it's set up just like, uh, as you see, the right tackle sets up like he's block, he's doing a pass block. So it opens up a huge running lane. And Petersian, as you see, come here with the stiff arm. Get off me. Just a great run there. He gets pushed out around the five-yard line. First to go there for Legacy. Terrific block by Connor Jennings. That set it up, the right tackle. A fade, and it's incomplete, intended for Dalton Royer, just a sophomore. Lanky fellow on the co coverage was Tile. It was Kyle Tacarante. The sophomore obviously has the height advantage there. What you have to do there, if you're the quarterback, Lynch, is you lay it up there and you give your wide receiver the best chance to catch the ball. Even if you underthrow it a little bit, just throw it up there so that he could jump and get it. They used to call that the alley-oop back in the day, Bill. <laughs> and we had a little motion that time as Alex Ortiz, the left wing back, got a little jumpy. And they'll move that back five yards. That'll make it second and goal from the 11. All right, offensive coordinator Justin Adams, what do you call here? You call another pass. Call another pass to the big, lanky uh, sophomore. Give him the ball. Give him a chance. Even though it's 10 yards out, you're going to have a height mismatch. I'd like to get the ball to Petersian if I'm legacy. Maybe to the near side of the field, which is the wide side. Well, you see Dalton is there on the lower part of the screen all by himself. Why not throw him the ball? Here's Petersian. And Broomfield was ready for him. Excellent tackle. Good heavens. On the stop was Noah Dome. And Dome let Petersian know. Said, take that. Great tackle there by Dome just to sniff out the pitchy play. Kind of similar to what happened on Broomfield in their last drive as they tried to get a first down with the pitch. Again, when you do something like that, you have to make sure you seal the outside or you drive the man. The last thing you want is any type of penetration. Ball at the 15-yard line, third and goal. Lynch toward the end zone, and the ball is caught. Touchdown. Jacob Royer. 15-yard scoring play, Lynch to Jacob Royer. His younger brother Dalton is also a wide receiver who they 
tried to hit on the first down play. So Broomfield is now trailing. Well, Bigger Bro is telling Little Bro, look what I could do. I could catch the football. I could go and get it to the end zone. Way to break down that ball. Hunter Rainwater to tack on the extra point. And it is up, and it is good. So with 2.27 to go in the first quarter, it's Legacy 7, Broomfield 3. Each team with one possession, and each team marching down the field and putting up points. Well, let's, let's take, here we go, Justin. Yeah, Bill, let's definitely take a look at the last play again. Lynch sets his feet and throws the ball up there. And again, what a great catch by Doyer as he takes a huge, huge hit there by number 16, Jack Sherwood who was almost there, could have got the ball, but just was a step too slow. Great play there by Legacy, and very important for them to score on their first drive and to get a lead, something that they had problems with, um, especially throughout this rivalry in the last two games. 16 play drive, five minutes, 30 seconds off the clock, four first downs on the drive, which totaled 75 yards. And again, it ended with a 15 yard hookup Lynch to Jacob Lawyer. So Hunter Rainwater will boot it deep. And it will go into the end zone for a touchback. Bill that ball went about 68 yards in the air. <laughs> Excuse me there, Bill, I apologize. But uh, one thing to also look at on that last touchdown play is as you look at Sherwood, he's only 5'10". So that's where you have the height advantage for Legacy. Royer stands 6-3. So now Broomfield will try to answer their second possession. First and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Eagles won last year's game 17-14. And so far, it's been an entertaining first quarter today. McLean gives the ball to Tripp. Tripp spins forward for about five yards before he's gang-tackled. So a good game for the Eagles. The initial hit was made by Troy Fawcett, the junior linebacker, 5'11", 195. Tripp is the tailback. Stodden is the fullback. Trip again, and it looks like he has a first down. On the tackle for the Lightning, Chandler Medina. Sometimes you have to give props where props is due, and that goes to number 52, Ty Leonard, the center, just opening up huge holes in the middle of the defense. First down for Broomfield. And the breeze coming through the window feels pretty good. Well, they need the breeze down on the field. We're in an air-conditioned area, Bill, so, you know. Still, the breeze feels pretty good. We'll be all right. It's getting a little chilly in here. First and 10, Eagles. Low snap, and they give to Zhang. And he gets spun down. Loss on the play. Good tackle by Kyle Ray. Taking a look at that last replay, you had a blitz up the A-gap, which is right up the middle where the center is. And so what happens is, is that you had your fullback who had to account for that rushing linebacker, and that's what, let Kyle, that's what left Kyle Ray open the defensive tackle to get that last tackle in the backfield. When you say A-gap, that's between the center and the right guard. Center and the guard. Right or left guard. Okay. Low snap, McLean handles, fires complete. And another first down for Broomfield. Simeon Combs with the nice grab. Let's go to come back, Bill. And another penalty. So it'll be second down, but that wipes out a first down completion. And Broomfield now with five penalties for 40 yards. One of the one of the topics and uh, 
one of the things that we talked about off the top of the show is that Broomfield cannot hurt themselves with self-inflicted wounds, especially with penalties. Wounds there, Bill. There you go. Panacucci split to the far side, Combs to the near side. It is second and 29 for Broomfield. Everybody has a play for 29 yards, don't they? Sometimes. McLean dumps it off to the fullback, Stodden. Stodden gets out to the 20, maybe 21 yard line before he's wrestled out of bounds by Mitch Burdick. When you talk about Zach Stodden in wrestling, we mentioned earlier, the state wrestling champ. Justin Adams, you played at Montbello High School. You played at the University of Colorado under many conditions. Did you prefer playing in warm weather like this or cold weather, say in the 30s or 40s? I always liked playing in cold weather. Why is that? You know, after a while, the heat is fun. It wears on your body more. But the best thing about cold weather, and we will tell you after uh, after we get back. Well, actually, I'll let you know. I'll tell you about what's the best thing about playing cold weather. 7-3 Legacy after one quarter. We'll be right back. Seven three legacy. First play from scrimmage in the second quarter. Broomfield in white, Lightning in blue and gold. Alec McLean hands the ball to Zhang. Zhang dancing out of trouble and he gets out across the 30 yard line. But that was a third and 20, so he's well short of a first down. But still positive yardage in the field position game. And Broomfield will have to punt it away. I like the way that Shane ran that last play. Quick feet. And you know what? Even though you didn't get the first down, what you did do is you helped out field position. If you get a good punt here, you could put Legacy in a, in a tough position as they start their next position, possession. Zach Stodden, the punter. Drew Hebel deep. Bad snap. But no rush. And a terrific punt by Stodden. Looked like Hebel lost it in the sun, and the ball is downed inside the 10-yard line. They'll spot it around the 8. A terrific punt. A missed opportunity there for Legacy. Even though you're a plain punt return, you usually have one guy that always goes after the punter. You could have had the ball, what, at what your own 25, and now you're starting at, what, the 7? They'll spot it at the eight-yard line, a 60-yard punt for Zach Stodden. And, and Legacy, their second possession of the ball game. And I mean starting on the Broomfield 25, excuse me. Now you're starting at your own seven-yard line. Matt Lynch looks over the defense. And here's the give to the tailback who's breaking free. And Petersian gets out across the 20-yard line. Darris with the tackle, so uh, they move the chains again. Bill, I don't use this a lot and say this word a lot, but this guy, Petersian, is special. The way that he's running the ball, he's getting great blocks. Don't get me wrong, but look at this right here. Again, look at the way he moves his weight, just shifts it from one side to the other, and then always finishes the run by running over the tackler. Moving in motion is Strafis. Petersian again up the middle, and he barrels over the linebacker who makes the tackle. It doesn't matter if you're a little guy, big guy. The way that Petersian is running this ball is impressive. Taking a look at, a, at the, the football chart here. There's the defensive the coordinator, yeah. Matt Craddock. Craddock uh, didn't make it to the trip last week to Florida. He's, he's who, been battling yeah, cancer, battle cancer. We wish him well, but he, the coach said he's doing better. Head coach, uh, Wayne Voorhees. Petersian, big yardage, gets a downfield block out to the 40-yard line. 
And another big gain on the tackle was Luke McEninch. Oh, Paterjan is going to look at this play on a counter run. Great block. It's a counter play. But look at the way Paterjan cut it upfield. He's missing a lot of yards. Great run. It was wide open. But if he cuts it upfield, he could get a lot more yards. And then you only have one person to, to fake out, and that's the, the safety. You don't have to worry about the cornerback. First and 10, Legacy at their own 41-yard line. Paterjan, the workhorse, straight up the middle. Still on his feet, inside the 40. Bouncing off tacklers. And it's a pickup of 20 yards. Bill, here, here's the playbook right now for Legacy. Counter left, counter right, because that's all they're doing. Look at this great block here again. As you see, the line just have, have a huge, huge hole. It's like the holes that uh, Emmitt Smith used to run through for the Dallas Cowboys. And again, Paterjan continuing to move his feet and finishing every run. It's going to take at least two to three people to take this guy down. First and 10, Lightning at the Broomfield 39-yard line. Paterjan, 11 carries, 101 yards. Lynch keeps toward the end zone. And the ball is caught. Touchdown, Van Valkenburg between two defenders. Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Wow. 39-yard touchdown pass. Lynch to Van Valkenburg. And that time the senior just outbattled two defenders. And he's only 5'11", 175. So Rainwater will attempt the extra point. Trenton Johnson, backup quarterback, is the holder. It's 13-3 legacy. And make it 14-3. Wow. So wow. the Lightning pretty pumped up, and now it's up to Broomfield's offense to respond. That's a backbreaker, Bill. Backbreaker of a play. As you said, Van Valkenburg is only 5'11. What a buck 70. But the one thing that you can't measure is you can't measure a kid's heart. In between two defenders, he just took the ball away. Kind of a little bit like last week, the game that we called for Holy Family. Just amazing, amazing play. Uh, and if we could take a look at the replay, um, and even if not, I just love the way that we could describe this play. Take a look back at this. Okay, what happens is it's all set up by the way that Paterjan has been running the football. Paterjan running the ball on counter left, counter right, through the hole, wide open, um, holes all over the place. So what do you do? As Paterjan comes out of the game and gets a little bit to drink, you go on a boot action play, and you roll to your left. You have Matt Lynch, who when he threw the ball, I was like, no, 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 because you throw it in between two guys. But again, what a great play there by Van Valkenburg to go and snatch the ball out of the air Touchdown Legacy, they're up 14-3. to Five-play drive, two minutes, 12 seconds. And not only is Paterjan having a good day, but Lynch is also having a fine afternoon. Two touchdown passes, Lynch four of six, 69 yards. So Rainwater will kick it away. Line drive kick that will bounce at the 10, and it's fielded by Zhang. Zhang with some room. And he takes it out to the 29-yard line before he's wrapped up. Brody DeBoer, one of the tacklers for the Lightning. So Broomfield, their defense has given up two touchdowns and two possessions. And Alec McLean leads the offense out. Not the way that Coach Davies wanted this game to start off. Still a long way to go. Uh, two possessions, two touchdowns. It's very important that Broomfield stops the bleeding here. At least sustain a long drive just to give your defense some time to get a breather. 8.44 left to go in the second quarter. McLean scrambling. He's got some yardage. McLean to the 40. Turns the corner and runs out of bounds as Hebel was chasing him down. Nice job by Alec McLean, the 6'4", 190-pound senior. Doesn't look like he had has blazing speed, Justin, but he was able to read the defense and find some 
open territory. Thank God he's fleet of foot. As you see there, he gets by, uh, gets away from the two defenders that were trying to tackle him in. And then he just, again, open field running, turns up the field. And he looks like a running back there. But way to get out of bounds. You, the last thing you want is your quarterback to get injured. And you tend to run faster when people with bad intentions are chasing after you. Sure. I think we all do. <laughs> First and 10, Broomfield at the legacy 44-yard line. Combs in motion. Zhang. Up the middle. Fumbles. Recovered. Brandon Simmons of Legacy falls on it. And the first turnover of the ball game. And Legacy in business. All the momentum on their side. And we'll see how that ball popped free. Looks to me that Zhang got caught trying to actually move the ball from one side to the other. No, that's just a, a strip. Didn't have the ball high and tight. What a great strip there Troy Fawcett. by Troy Fawcett. And again, these are the type of plays that could turn a football game. You're already down 14-3. to three. If Legacy could get a score here, they could really almost, I wouldn't say put a nail in the coffin of this game, but definitely take it over. Jacob Royer split to the far side. Moving in motion is Van Valkenburg. And Petersian gets it up the middle. And he gets stopped. He gets sandwiched. Good play, collapsing from the end by Riston. Also in on the stop was Mitch Burdick. No gain on the play. Might have lost half a yard. Yeah, Blake Witzel also had a little bit into that, uh, that last play, getting a tackle in the backfield. So great job there by the defense of Broomfield. Eight minutes to go, second quarter. Legacy 14, Broomfield 3. Lynch has the H back, Matthews, and he goes down at the 39-yard line. Patrick Matthews, sure-handed, good blocker. About five yards on that play. That'll bring up a third and a long five for the Lightning. Broomfield looking for their first defensive stop of the afternoon. We're at North Stadium just a little north of Denver, Colorado. The cars you may see from time to time in the distance, that's I-25. Lynch in trouble, and he gets sacked. So the defense for the Eagles rises after the turnover. Blake Witzel in on the sack along with Cooper Gardner. Eagles brought some pressure, Justin. Well, Woodsell gets the sack, but it all was started there by Michael Riston as he cuts in there, takes on um, the running back, Petersian, and then you just leave it for the rest of the big boys to go and clean up on the sack. So what a great play there by Broomfield to get off the field to get a huge three and out and to get the ball back. Kicking the ball away will be Trenton Johnson. Short kick, and it will bounce at the 33 and take a Broomfield roll, downed at the 35-yard line by Rodriguez. So the Eagles with a big defensive stop, and they have the ball in pretty good shape at the 35-yard line. Keep that last possession in your memory bank, Bill. If Broomfield comes back to win this game, do not forget about the opportunity that Legacy had off of a turnover to make this a bigger deficit or to, or to push – Bigger their lead. Huge crowd on hand, both sides. And the Broomfield people making some noise on the far side. First and 10 Eagles. McLean. Looked like he tried to set up a screen. He's in trouble and throws it wisely out of bounds. Closest intended receiver for Broomfield was Brady Baldwin. Six foot three, 210 pound tight end. Second down and 10. Big kid. That's a huge kid. Both coaches said they do not like playing on Saturday afternoon. I can see why. As you say, what? High school should be played on Friday, college on Saturday, and the NFL on Sunday. I would agree. But because of Rosh Hashanah, a Jewish holiday, they've pushed the game back to a Saturday afternoon. 
Here's the pitch to Zhang. And he gets cracked down. Good stop. Sure tackle by Travis Ebbs. Not much ebb and flow that time for Zhang. That'll bring up a third down. And an injured player for Broomfield on the far side. Bill, we have our first casualty think uh, due to the weather. I'll put it that way, to the heat. And that's why the last player is, uh, is on, uh, is bending that's, over. That's Zhang. Yeah. I no, check that. That is Zach Stodden. Yeah. The fullback who also plays on defense. If you play again this replay, you'll see that he, he tries to get the block and he makes contact. And as soon as he made contact, he, let's put it this way, just had an upset stomach. Okay. We'll leave it that way. It's not the first time <laughs> that has happened to a player. Here we go. As we look back at the last play, making one block and then, uh, well, yet again he bends over and, well, there you go. Oh. Oh. There you are. There you go there for the kids. That's, yeah. So, that's why you always want to go and make sure that you hydrate. And this is an artificial turf surface, so they'll try to clean that up. Well, he left it all on the field. That's well, all that matters. A, we did a basketball game a couple of years ago, Justin, a girls' basketball game. And yeah. One of the young ladies at the free throw line let loose. Had a little delay. But you're right, the heat can take a toll. Pass downfield, incomplete. Good coverage. Pass was intended for Riston. Not sure who was on the coverage for Bro or for Legacy. Looks like it was Caleb Martin. Martin with the good pass breakup. And fourth and 15 brings up another punting situation for Broomfield. Stodden is the normal punter. So now they're gonna have a backup kicker. Tristan Smith, it looks like. Or check that. Whistle blows. It's going to be McLean, the quarterback. The nine and the eight look very similar on the Broomfield uniforms. Whistle blown. So we'll see if the quarterback, how good of a kicker he is, punter. Drew Hebel is standing at his own 43-yard line. Has a five-yard procedure penalty. Puts Broomfield back five yards. We know how good a punter Stodden is. He had a 60-yarder earlier. And when you have a quarterback, Justin, you might think there could be a fake, but I don't think at this part of the field and this long to go. Now it's third and it's fourth and a million. Yeah. Uh, I don't Normally, think if be a you while. see a quarterback there, you think about it. Gets the kick away, and it goes out of bounds around midfield. And they'll spot it. They will spot it at the 39-yard line. So a 14-yard punt. And legacy, that's almost like a turnover, Justin. It is. It is a turnover because you're not flipping the field. And what I mean by flipping the field is is exchanging uh, field positions. So Broomfield had the ball at the 30-yard line. The least that you want to do is make sure that legacy starts their possession on the 30-yard line, which is why I say that's flipping the field. That's a tough spot to put a quarterback in. I'm sure he wasn't practicing punting on the sidelines in this hot weather. But at least he got it away. And at least the ball got to him. Yeah. Unlike last time as it hit the ground and then the punter picked it up and punted it away. And, and I can't say enough about how important this possession is for legacy as we have a brief break in action. Legacy has to score. They have to score a touchdown. This is the way that they have to go into to this series. They Five, need at least three. 5.47 to go in the second quarter. Legacy with a 14-3 advantage on Broomfield. Broomfield struck first, 35-yard field goal, and then two touchdown passes by Lynch for the Lightning. Petersian stutter steps and is brought down at the 40-yard line. In on the stop was Jackson Pallone. So it'll bring up a second down. Lost about a half yard on the play. Looks like they have a protrusion figured out a little bit. So this is where you want to start running on the outside. 
so you can open up the inside or do a screen, something different here. Paterja has 13 carries so far in this game, Bill. So, again, he's uh, 17 away from that 30 mark I was talking about earlier. 14th carry is for big yardage. First down. Down to the 27-yard line before he's corralled by Kyle Holbrook. So that'll be another first down. And that offensive line doing the job for Legacy. Bill, I think you even know what this play is called. Say it with me. Counter. Counter right. Again, great blocking there by the offensive line of Legacy. Opening up a huge hole there for Paterjan just to run through. 30 yards, first down Legacy. DJ Zissimos was also in on the stop for the Eagles. Paterjan following his blockers, cuts it up inside the 15 before he is tripped up at the ankles. Not sure who got a hand on him. It might have been Cooper Gardner. But right now, the legacy offense dominating the Broomfield defense. Guess, guess, guess what play that is, Bill. I I'll let you guess exactly what play this is. Yet again, that would be a counter. Yeah, it is a counter. You bring the big guy through. Again, that's 62. Logan Lyons, your right guard. You bring him on a pull. Then you have your fullback take care of the end. You cut that uh, that big boy up and let him take care of that linebacker. You have a huge hole there for Paterjan. I was going to say A-gap. <laughs> Paterjan goes the other way now. And he gets taken down hard. Good open field tackle. And that was Noah Dome on the tackle. Ball is resting at the 12 yard line. Game's on the brink here, Bill. Actually, it's on the 11. Yeah, game's on the brink. This, this is, this is, this series of downs could tell the rest of the game. Even if Legacy were to score here, I would not count out Broomfield. I, I, I get it, but the way that Legacy is running the football and knowing that in the second half, if they have an 18 point lead going into halftime, they could just run out the clock. I know it's two more quarters left to go in this game, but they are dominant so far. Their line is doing a great job blocking. Second and eight. Movement on the defensive side, no flag. Lynch complete to Ortiz, no, it's incomplete. Ortiz could not bring it in. That'll bring up a third down. Like the call, the only thing that I would change is that you want to run that play on the right side. Reason being is because you'll run it on Lynch's throwing arm. Lynch is a right arm quarterback. It's harder to throw the ball across your body when you're going, when you're running to your left, you have to shift your weight and your shoulders in order to throw the ball to your right, or to your left, excuse me, when you're right-handed. Looking at the time, 3-11 left to go in the second quarter. Big third and eight for Legacy. Little screen, and it's complete inside the 10, but well covered by Broomfield. The pass was to Michael Straffis. And on the stop, Blake Witzel. So good job by Broomfield. They were not suckered in. Guys in the truck do an amazing job if we can look back at that last replay. And I thought that Straffis had a wide open middle that if he made one move, he could have got the first down and maybe a touchdown as again we look at the replay just a great middle screen you bring in uh, your wide receiver there he has he has a couple of blockers ahead of him I don't know why he decided to go to uh, to his right he was taken down Rainwater's 16 or 26 yard field goal try is good so the lightning tack on three and it's now legacy 17 Broomfield three 225 to go in the second quarter Broomfield will get the ball back with three timeouts. It would be a huge lift for the Eagles if they could punch one in late in this quarter. Still, if your legacy mission accomplished on that last possession, you push this to a 14-point game where uh, Broomfield has to score at least, well, they have to score two touchdowns to tie the ball game. So it's better than where you have two touchdowns that could beat you. Both teams lost their opening games. That makes this rivalry even more important. Forget about the rivalry for a second. Each team needs a win. You don't want to start your season 0-2. 
And one thing I like about Gary Davies, the head coach of Broomfield, now in his 26th year, he'll play anybody at any time. Last week, Pomona, could he have opened up with a, an easier foe? Sure he could have, but he chose not to. What it does. Legacy's a 5A yeah, yeah, team. That was six plays covering three minutes and 22 seconds. A couple of first downs ending with a 26-yard field goal by Rainwater. And Rainwater's kickoff. It will be a touchback. In high school football, once the ball crosses the goal line, it's an automatic touchback. You can't run it out. So again, 2.25 to go for Broomfield to operate. What do you think about that rule, Bill? Do you think that uh, Chasta should change that rule? I'm a fan of kickoff returns, but I can understand that they want to maybe make it safer. You have guys running 60 yards one direction and guys running the other direction at full speed. You can have some pretty ferocious collisions. But again, it is football. Alec McLean is the quarterback. Two men split to the right, one to the left. Trip the tailback, and McLean drops the snap and he falls on it. Second down, loss of three. Make it a loss of five. Let's take a look at the replay. That's a pretty good snap. I mean, yeah, the ball was high. There. That's exactly where you want it. So just McLean just dropped the ball. Clock is moving. Two minutes. Second down, 15. Hebel at safety is out by the 34-yard line. His job not to get beat deep. Keeper. Good yardage and a good hit by Brandon Simmons. And that's a first down for Broomfield. They'll spot it at the 35 yard line, 20 yard scamper. We also look to have one man down on the field. McLean, legacy. three carries, 41 yards. And as Justin said, we have Brandon Simmons, number 21. He's the guy who made the hit. Simmons a little shaky coming off the field with one of the trainers. But I can't say enough about that last call there by Coach Davies. Just to open up a little bit more on offense. You have a quarterback that can run a little bit in McLean. And, and to do a, a quarterback dive, um, a quarterback draw, excuse me, really helps out this offense. Strafus replaces Simmons. Pass is complete to the 43-yard line, Dante Panacucci. His brother Dion played for Gary Davies at Broomfield. And a timeout is taken by the Eagles with a minute 18 to go. That is their first timeout. Good to see Dante Panacucci back in the game catching a couple of, of balls. He was hit earlier in the game um, on a hit that I thought that should have been warranted of a penalty by Drew Hebel in the first quarter. So he's one of the guys that you have to get the football to. He had five catches last week for a touchdown and over 100 yards receiving. So that's his second reception of the game. So hopefully they could get the ball more to his hands. Bill Rogan along with Justin Adams. And Justin, in the pregame, I was admiring your Big 12 championship ring. Now the Buffs are in the Pac-12. Our previous game, we saw Holy Family defeat Faith Christian. That was prior to the Buffs' first game against CSU, which they won. Had to make you pretty proud to see your Buffaloes get off to a 1-0 start. Great to see those guys do such a great job, especially the way that they put away CSU in the last possession. Last year's team, if they would have had the lead and would have lost it, they would have lost by maybe 21 points. Great to see this team fight through adversity and get a much, much needed victory for the Buffs. Second down and two for the Eagles. Ball at the 43-yard line. Lane being pressured, has the first down and takes a hit. Coming up and making the stick for the Lightning was Nick Weaver, the linebacker. Weaver, 5'10", 190 pounds. But it's a first down, clock stops momentarily while they move the chains. Again, 17-3 legacy here in the second quarter. Claims pass broken up, intended for Zhang. On the coverage was Caleb Martin. 
And if he was there maybe a step sooner, that could have been a pick six. So 58 seconds left on the clock. Second down and 10. Sure, take a look at this replay as Alex, Alex McClain just telegraphs this pass, throws it, and he doesn't throw it hard enough to the outside, and it was almost an interception. Fortunately enough, it was just a drop pass uh, for Broomfield, so they have the ball back. And let's see what they could do with about 58 seconds left to go till half. Ball at the Broomfield 46-yard line. Two receivers right, one split to the left. McLean launches it deep for Panacucci. Incomplete out of bounds. Tight coverage by Quentin Rodriguez. He's made a couple of decent plays in the secondary. He had one on a block. He tipped a pass away earlier, and that one, he was all over Dante Panacucci. And that's what you want to do against a wide receiver who's taller than you, is you want to shield him out, and that's exactly what uh, Rodriguez did on that last play, is you want to use the sideline as your friend, and that's exactly what he did. On the opposite side, if you're Alex McClain, you want to give your wide receiver a little more of an opportunity to catch that ball, so you want to throw it a little bit closer to the bottom of the numbers in order that you have that much, you have some more, some space to, uh, to operate there. McClain, four of eight, 57 yards passing. More difficulty, scrambles, fires, Intercepted by Legacy, Michael Strafis with the pick at the 37 yard line. And that will nullify that possession. And Legacy, they are fired up, their fans and the team, as the Eagles are pretty flat right now. And Justin, this play just started out bad. The last thing you want to do is make something that's already bad worse. And that's exactly, unfortunately, what McClain did. He drops the snap for the second time in his possession and then throws off his back foot on the run um, into the hands of uh, the defensive back there. So, uh, unfortunately, there, that's not what you want to do. And now Legacy has the ball. And I'm interested to see what they have. What, two timeouts left, Bill? Knowing Wayne Voorhees, yeah. two timeouts, 42 seconds left. He's... Not going to take a knee. No, you have a confident quarterback. Why not throw it up, see what you could do? Plus, even if you get a turnover, your defense is playing well. Quick outlet pass. Uh-oh. Is complete. Uh-oh. And down the sidelines goes Royer. Jacob Royer with big yardage. Seeing Matt Lynch do his best uh, Peyton Manning imitation there. On the quick pass out to the wide receiver. 21-yard gain, and they're in the hurry-up offense. Sure, let's take a quick look at this play. Just a quick pass out to your wide receiver who takes the ball upfield, gets a couple of blocks there. We call that a wide receiver screen. Great 25 play. seconds left, clock is moving. Lynch, sideline pass complete. Did not get out of bounds, so they'll have to use a timeout. Uh, Drew Hebel with the reception, but he was right on the sideline. Don't know why he didn't get out of bounds. Well, it's okay if you, you're trying to make something happen. Sometimes the best thing to do is to catch the football and to go out of bounds. So Legacy has one timeout left, 18 seconds to go in the half. Lightning 17, Eagles three. Broomfield looked good, first possession, marched it down. Drive stalled, they kicked a field goal. And the first two possessions for Legacy, touchdowns. Touchdown passes by Matt Lynch. They added later a field goal. And that's where we stand, 17 to three. And Legacy, they've heard it for two years now that Broomfield has beaten them. All these kids know each other. And this is certainly bragging rights on the line and Legacy ready to play today. Taking advantage of every opportunity. The second turn, uh, Legacy has caused, excuse me, two turnovers. As you can see, the fans for, from Legacy. You know, that was one of my favorite parts of playing football, whether collegiately or in high school, was, yes, playing on the field, making plays, making things happen, but also to see your classmates come out and support you. Always, always a great feeling. And Broomfield has turned the ball over twice. Legacy has not turned the ball over. And that's what Justin and I feel one of the most important stats in football sometimes gets overlooked. Lynch, outlet pass is complete to Dalton Royer to the 25 yard line. He is tackled by Holbrook. 
11 seconds left. They stopped the clock briefly to set the chains. Might try to get one more play before a field goal try. Lynch, outlet pass complete. Down to the 16 yard line to Strophus. One second left and a timeout taken. Interesting call there, Bill. If I was the offensive coordinator, I would have used my last timeout. Say it could serve a little bit of time and then would have went in the end zone. I know you want to make it a closer field goal, and that's what they did, and that's what Coach Voorhees has accomplished, but you almost ran out of time. It's almost better that you use the timeout and that you go towards the end zone. Rainwater will attempt the kick from the left hash mark. It'll be a 34-yard try. The holder, Trent Johnson, will spot it at the 24-yard line. Kick is up, and it is good. It also went into the soccer goal. Do you get a point for that? You do. <laughs> <laughs> so Legacy at the buzzer to end the first half with a field goal, and they lead it 20-3, to three, and they are running toward the locker room to get some A, air conditioning, B, some fluids, and C, just enthusiastic. By the way that Legacy is playing, I don't think they want to go into halftime. And Broomfield trudging off. They'll have to regroup. So our score is Legacy 20, Broomfield 3. We're at the half. We'll be back with the halftime stats and the third quarter kickoff after this. The schools taking part in today's event are part of the 340 member schools of the Colorado High School Activities Association. As members, we promote and protect the privilege of participation in interscholastic activities. We also promote lifetime values like respect, hard work, teamwork, and sporting behavior. We help reach and motivate students. We develop policies as a group as a responsibility of membership. We are coaches, game officials, and administrators working for the common good of kids. We are CHASA. Team, hey fellas, we haven't won anything, nothing. Let's play a second half like we played the first half, no let up. Well, just like last week, the game that we broadcasted where Holy Family was up at halftime, what you want to do is you want to put your foot on the throat of your opponent where you have a big lead like the way that you do now, especially a rival. So it's very important for Legacy to make sure that they take this football on the first drive and leave no doubt. If they could get a touchdown on this drive, especially through the ground, uh, the majority of the yards could be through the ground, it could be, it could be over. This game could be over. Brian Tanagawa, sophomore kicker, will boot it away. Rodriguez and Hebel are deep for the Lightning. And it will come to Hebel. He has it at the three. He's in trouble. Spins out of danger. And he can't turn the corner. They strung it out well. And a good tackle. Not sure who that was. It looked like it was number 33, Angelo Alvarado, who had a tackle in the first half on special teams. And just a quick update, Bill, on the weather conditions. It moved from 85 degrees at kickoff now it's 92 degrees, so it's 7 degrees hotter, and then you add 10 to 15 degrees because we're playing on turf. That's at least, what, 107, 112? That's what it feels outside for these young men. Conditioning could play a big factor in the second half. The quarterback is Matt Lynch. Lynch had a fine first half. He was 10 of 13, 124 yards and a touchdown. He comes out slinging it. Pass is complete, Petersian. Petersian across the 30 yard line as he picked up a good block. Ooh, good? <laughs> good? Got a great block. <laughs> oh my goodness. See, this is what makes me happy. Not only was that a great block, but it was a tight end that made that block. Brody DeBoer with a great, great hit. Number 88, the big man. And that's, that was, those are tone setters, Bill tone-setting type hits, and that's exactly what you want, especially starting in the second half. 
DeBoer is six feet, 175 pounds. First and 10 at the 32 yard line for Legacy. Petersian gets one or two before he's finally brought down. In on the tackle for the Eagles was Matt Hawkins. Hawkins, a 5'8", 195-pound senior linebacker. Make it a one-yard gain. Second down and nine for Legacy. Ball at the 33-yard line. Wouldn't be surprised if I see a pass here, especially a play-action pass. Something like a boot to the outside uh, that uh, Coach Voorhees will, will draw up for his offense. Petersian, 17 carries, 132 yards. And scrambling across the 35-yard line. And it looks like a backup running back, and that was uh, Jared Camerlo. So Camerlo is first carry. And it brings up a third down and five at the 37-yard line. Camerlo is the tailback. Two men split right, two split left. Sideline pattern is complete to Strafis, who has the first down. On the tackle, Tacarante, but there was a cushion there. Lynch saw it and delivered the ball on time. Just a quick hook route, and that's what you want to do, is you want to catch the football. A five yard, you run five yards upfield, and then you curl back towards the quarterback. Just a great throw there by Lynch. Hit him right in the hands and then you let your wide receiver Strafface do the rest of the dirty work and get you the first down. Ball at the legacy 47 yard line, first and 10. Trips right, and Petersian back in the game and he gets knocked on his back. Good play up front. On the tackle is Austin Harris. Great tackle there by the senior. He had 10 tackles last week, so um, a little bit surprised that we haven't heard his of his name a little bit more. But you can see the fatigue is starting to set in. You know, the big boys have their hands or their hips. Very important that they, you know, stop legacy on this drive, especially these uh, next two set of downs. Jackson Pallone was also in on that last tackle, sophomore. Petersian up the middle, first down and more, and he gets tackled. Inside the 40-yard line, Kyle Holbrook perhaps saving a touchdown. And Petersian has certainly been running all over the Broomfield well, you, defense today. Well, you got to give props where props is due. A huge hole there by the offensive line that opened up a big hole there for Petersian to run through. And that's just big kind of the MO of the game so far, huh? Petersian left, Petersian right, counter left, counter right. Petersian having a huge day on the ground. That was a stop. Wristing on the tackle, about a one-yard gain. Six different Lightning players have caught passes today. So the young sophomore quarterback, Matt Lynch, has been distributing the football. In motion is Van Valkenburg. And there goes the backup running back. Uh-oh. Down to the goal line. Jared Camerlo, and the crowd on their feet. A 34-yard jaunt, and it's first and goal at the one-yard line. We gave the offensive line their props. Great job there. Angelo Chavez, Logan Lyons, Connor Jennings. I mean, what a great job. But also the one guy that we haven't talked about was Alex Ortiz, opening it up huge holes. That's your fullback as the running back takes the ball down to the one yard line. Great run there by Camelo. Noah Dome on the tackle, saving a touchdown. Hand off to the fullback, and that did not fool Broomfield as Alex Ortiz gets wrapped up. On the tackle was Trenton Johnson. Check that, Blake Witzel on the tackle. This is what the running game also does for you, Bill, is that it just eats up the clock Already we have, we're going down to the seven minute mark of the third quarter. So huge, huge possession here for Legacy, especially if they could punch it in. 20 to three Lightning, 7-11 to go, third quarter. 
And they're on the doorstep. And it looked like Petersian moved a little early. They gave the ball to him, perhaps a bit anxious. Can't you blame him? <laughs> and there's our referee, Mike Usry. The umpire, Don Ray. The head linesman is Bob Chainhalt. Back judge, Rich Iverson. And the line judge is Bob Blodgett. Bill, I was saying that uh, the way that these holes have been so open and the, the, the job that the legacy linemen have done, can you blame Petersian for just being a little bit excited, wanting to get the football? Well, I can blame him on that. I mean, he moved early. I'm blaming him. Oh, come on. I mean, a little bit. I'm like a coach right now. I would have taken him out of the game, benched him. <laughs> Petersian plunges forward, gets about a yard. Lead blocker, Angelo Chavez, the center, getting up last. In this heat, and you play a lot of these guys, you know, still not in peak football condition. That probably will come in a few more games. These kids are going to sleep well tonight on both teams. Definitely, especially on the second game. Hey, take a look also at the bottom of the screen here. You have uh, number 83, Royer, who had a touchdown earlier today. Pass is incomplete, intended for Jordan Van Valkenburg. That'll bring up a fourth and five, and the field goal unit comes on. Just missed Van Valkenburg on the comeback route. Van Valkenburg running as hard as he can, making it look like he was going to the back pylon, which is the far pylon, as you can see on your screen. But what happens is, is he stopped his route, cut it back, and it was coming back towards the football. Just Lynch just missed the hook up there for the touchdown. So Legacy will have to settle for a field goal try. Hunter Rainwater is two for two today. He has field goals of 26 and 34 yards. This will be a chip shot, a 22-yarder, a little more than an extra point. Good snap and hold, and the kick is up, and it is no good. He pulled it to the left. Mm. So a break for Broomfield. 6.05 to go in the third quarter. Legacy still leads 20-3. to three. But that, that leaves the door ajar a little bit, Justin. If Broomfield can march down, and get a touchdown, then we have a 10-point ball yeah, game. Yeah, Broomfield caught a break there, 6.05 left to go to third quarter. If we could take a, look, a replay, a look at the replay, excuse me, there's one thing that I kind of want to point out, and I don't, I don't know if we can. The the last, uh, the field goal um, attempt, if we could take a look at the replay, and I think there were a couple of Broomfield players that jumped on the backs of each other. Now, I don't think that you could do that in the high school level, Either Alec way, McClain, the quarterback goal. for Broomfield, picks up five yards. That'll bring up a second down and five. He was stopped by Chandler Medina. Important possession here for Broomfield. I like to see them throw the ball and get it into their big guy, Dante Petacucci. This player right here, six foot four, 176. He's a track runner also. He also lodged up 33 inches. Get the ball into his hands. High jump, excuse me, 33 inches. Excuse me, high jump. He high jumps 33 inches? I could do that. <laughs> I don't know if you got 33 inch, inch vert, BR. <laughs> and out of bounds with the first down is Alec McLean. If you're talking vertical 33, yes. I don't know. But high jumping something 33 inches, I can do. Well. 33 feet. How about that? 30, I can't not, not high feet. jump 33 feet either. You're saying his vertical there leap is go. 33 there inches. There you go. There you are. Okay. I was right the first time. But sort I am time. sure I could leap over something 33 inches high. I don't know, Bill, if you could leap over something 33 centimeters high right now, Bill. You're getting up there in age. Our stat man is between us. You're lucky. <laughs> Connor Shreve doing a good job. It's a first down for Broomfield at their own 35-yard line. Trip is the tailback. McLean yelling signals. And the give goes to the fullback, Stodden. Stodden was sick in the first half. Had an upset stomach, left the game, but he's back 
and he picks up good yardage. Good to see Stoughton back in the game. And all you see there is a quick trap play. And what you want to do is you want to have a quick hit up the middle. You pull your guard, and you have and you leave your uh, your uh, d the tackle there for Legacy. You leave him alone, and you move up to the next level if you're on the offensive line. So. Great block there just to open up the middle and get some positive yardage on the last play. Combs split to the far side, Panacucci to the near. And Tripp gets the handoff. Make that Zhang on the handoff and he gets stymied. Kyle Ray wrapping him up in a bear hug. But there is a penalty marker on the play. Referee Mark Usry discussing it. I look over the far side there, Justin, and you see the stands are pretty full, but a lot of people now have gone onto the grass berms. They're going to wave off the penalty after discussing it, make it a third down and long. A loss on the play. It'll be third and eight. But I think sitting on the natural grass is probably cooler than sitting either in the bleachers, certainly cooler than being on the field. Yeah, better than sitting on some metal bleachers, always to sit on uh, some comfortable grass. And, and the way that uh, the individuals here at North Stadium take care of their field is very, uh, very admirable. It's, it's very wonderful to see how they do it. Low snap. McLean scoops it like a shortstop. Downfield. Tip drill out of the hands of Coombs, through the hands of Panacucci, and a penalty on the play. But you see the people trying to stay hydrated, trying to get any shade they can. It almost makes me feel guilty being in this beautiful air-conditioned booth. I don't. Almost. <laughs> the flag is... It's a penalty on Broomfield, and it will be declined by... Legacy, so it's fourth and eight, and the Eagles will have to boot it away. Tough, it's just a tough day overall so far for Broomfield trying to get any type of positive yardage. You know what? If you have a fake up your sleeve, that would be the time to try it. No, too early, Justin. Too early. You think so? Be you have three, three forty-seven. The way that Legacy is running the football, you got to do something drastic. You know, if you're Broomfield, Stodden will punt it. Hebel is deep. Nice kick. Hebel at his 20-yard line. And he gets wrapped up. Beautiful tackle. Special teams play by Jack Sherwood. 5'10", 165-pound junior. So with 3.33 to go in the third quarter, Legacy with a 20-3 advantage and the football. And they'll start out in their own territory at the 19-yard line. What you want to do here on this drive if your legacy is pretty much do what you did last time. Eat up a lot of clock, drive down the field. You don't want Broomfield to have the ball until it's the fourth quarter. If Broomfield gets their, the, the next possession in the fourth quarter, then legacy has done their job. Sophomore quarterback Matt Lynch has been impressive. He doesn't play like a sophomore. Petersian gets the handoff and he gets belted backwards. Austin Harris. Petersian's also coming out the game. He's limping a little bit. Jared Camerlo is in there. Camerlo had a big gain in that previous possession. He's rushed the ball twice for 38 yards. Our camera guys do such a great job. See if we can get a look on Petersian on the sideline. Looks like he uh, injured his hamstring. Could be a cramp, too, the way they're bending his... His leg, trying to stretch it out. So it's second and 10, no gain. Lynch, outlet pass to nobody. Ooh, looked like a mix up there. And Lynch got drilled by Austin Harris and was looking for a flag. So third and 10 for the Lightning, and this right now is the biggest play for Broomfield. Well, with 2.45 left to go in the quarter, Legacy, you know, Legacy has the game in their hands. You get a first down here, at least another two minutes will run off the clock. So if you're Broomfield, it's important that you get a stop here and make it a three and out so you get the football back. And they could get the ball back in decent field position. Lynch, quick outlet pass, incomplete. 
Pass intended for Jacob Royer. And that'll bring out the punting unit, Trenton Johnson. I believe this is just his second punt of the game. Lynch was going out there for Royer, the senior, number 83, who already had a, a touchdown earlier this game. Try to hit him on a comeback route. Just, just missed the timing. Zhang is deep along with Kyle Holbrook. Good snap. Line drive kick, Holbrook has it at the 42. Crosses midfield, gets belted down right at the midfield stripe. I thought he was initially calling for a fair catch. I thought so too. That they, right hand went up and he brought did. it down apparently just in time. But an eight yard gain and let's see if we can check out Holbrook. Yeah, it looked like a possible. Yeah, let's see if they can speed catch. it up a little bit. And, and uh, it, it looked like his oh. head just came down. So the referees right now are talking about if he did call for a fair catch or not. And if he did, that that would be a penalty on Broomfield. The legacy coaching staff barking out at the officials. You know what? But even if they did, and your Coach Davies, I'll scream right back at him and say, hey, hey, you know, you let the play go. You didn't call it when the play was going. Yeah, why didn't the official right there make that call? Yeah, the, the official was looking at the, the returner, so I don't know why they didn't call it. Huge penalty, Bill. Huge, huge penalty. And I tell you what, they marked off seven yards instead of five. Bill, call this a 15-yard penalty. No, it's a five-yard penalty. Right, right, right. But he caught the ball at the 42-yard line. It should be spotted at the 37. So, so it that cost Broomfield right. two yards anyway. Yeah, so it turned out to be a 15-yard penalty when you look at where Broomfield should have started, which would have been the 50-yard line. So first and 10, Eagles at the 35-yard line. McLean needs to heat up. Throws downfield incomplete. Running free, though he didn't throw it to him, for Broomfield was Haley Paulson. Missed this man there. It looked like an all go, and what all goes means, that type of route combination is, is exactly what, it, what I'm saying. All go, everybody go on a seam route. What you want to do as a quarterback is you want to use your eyes to move either the linebacker or the safety, one side or the other. Whichever way that the safety declares, you throw it the opposite way. Panacucci split to the near side. He's got a seven inch height advantage on Brandon Simmons. We'll see if they go that way. McLean will keep. Turns the corner out of bounds, short of a first down. They'll mark it at the 41 yard line. A crucial third and four. 2.15 to go in the third quarter. Legacy 20, Broomfield three. And Justin, is this four down territory? Yes, yes, because the way that Legacy has been running the football, you stopped a three and out on the last possession, granted. You know, that's a great job. But again, as this game has uh, went beforehand, you've seen that Legacy has ran the ball left, ran the ball right, wherever they want it. So this is very important that you get a first down here. Trip is the tailback, and he gets it, but the whistle blows, flag flies. And there could have been some yeah, offsides, offsides on the offense. Looks to me that it was offsides on the offense, but it, it could be an encroachment. So a legal procedure on Broomfield, and that makes a manageable third and four become a third and nine. The wind is starting to pick up, blowing from the north to the south. Depending upon what they get here, Justin, if they get it to within two yards or less for on fourth down, I would go for it. Sure. If not, I would punt it away. See what Coach Davis could cook up. And usually when you're in a situation like this, you want to get the ball into your best playmaker. And to be their best best playmaker for Broomfield is Dante Petacucci, the wide receiver number four. He's at the top of your screen. So let's see if Brufo can get him the ball. Good pressure 
And McLean escapes. First down and more. McLean down the sideline. And Alec McLean will score. Good heavens, a 64 yard touchdown run. And Broomfield has some life. Sometimes the best plays are broken plays. And that's what you just saw on that last play. As we take a look at it, look at it. You can just see Alec McClain looking to throw the football, but all the, the defenders for uh, Legacy were coming after him. And then he points out to his man saying, I'm going to take this ball. I'm going to run. And there's nobody there to stop McClain. 60 some odd yards into the end zone. Huge play. And Broomfield, they just got themselves a ticket back into this football game. Travis Fries with the extra point. And our score with a minute 59 to go in the third quarter. Legacy 20, Broomfield 10. Wow. Four plays, 65 yards, totaling 30 seconds. Of course, the big chunk of that, 64 yards down the sideline. Yeah, 64 yards. Amazing how the game could change on one play. And the fans on the far side were fired up. They had been sitting on their hands for quite some time. Bill, how big now is that missed field goal that uh, Legacy missed with the 22-yarder? Yes. Early in the third quarter. How big is it now? Now a field goal and a touchdown, and we're tied. So McLean, eight carries. 139 yards and a touchdown. What happened there for Legacy? They just got caught in a man defense. They sent a blitz, and they were just about to get to McClade, but unfortunately they couldn't corral him. McClade, being a fleet of foot quarterback, got to the outside, needed one block, and he got it, and then he was off to the races, to the house, 64 yards. 2010, Bill, we have a game. And the Broomfield students jumping up and down in their white shirts on the far stands. I also look up on the berm to our right, Justin. There are a few small trees and people under them looking for shade. It is in the 90s here today. And on the field, it's even hotter. That artificial turf surface, which is a, a beautiful playing surface, but it does hold the heat. And now the pressure will be on the offensive legacy to steal back the momentum that Broomfield has. Brian Tanagawa will kick deep. Rodriguez and Hebel deep. And it's Hebel at the seven to the 20. He's running around in circles like the Three Stooges and he gets out to the 27 yard line before he is finally brought down. On the tackle was Riley Derris. I mentioned earlier, Justin, a good uniform game. Both teams have really nice uniforms, but I have discovered quickly that the Broomfield numbers are very difficult to see. Lynch passing today, 12 of 23, 149 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Three receivers right, one left. Tayton Petersian, the senior, is the tailback. Gets the pitch. He goes down, and Broomfield fired up. Ball is loose. Oh, my goodness. they saying that the ball was blown dead. Oh, my goodness, Bill. And the Broomfield sideline upset. They felt it was a fumble. Oh, my goodness. And we'll have to take a look at that. I did not see the ball come free, Justin. Bill, this score should be 20-16. to 16. Take a look at this last play. And the way the Partizian has the ball, it's stripped. The ball is stripped. The ball is not in his hands. The referees blow the whistle too early. They thought that the play was over, and it wasn't. It should be a return for a touchdown. Guys, if we could take a look at the replay one more time, you could see well, that Let's this see should exactly be a when the ball came out. Okay, again, here you go with the pitch. Again, Patrician has the ball. He's running to the outside, try to cut it up. And it's the out ball right is now. stripped it's right out. there. And Broomfield will have the ball. So it is Broomfield ball, but you're right, Justin. That would have been a touchdown. A 
a good break and a bad break for Broomfield yes. at the same time. Yes, and don't get me wrong. It's huge that Broomfield has the ball back. Again, how quickly that a game could change and the momentum could swing. But again, it should be a four-point game, not a ten-point game. But let's see if Broomfield can take full advantage of this opportunity, this turnover. Minute 41 to go in the third quarter. 20 to 10 legacy. Broomfield with the ball on the legacy 25 yard line. First turnover today by the Lightning. Alec McLean after a 64 yard touchdown gives the ball to Noah Tripp. Tripp still on his feet. First down inside the 15. As he is brought down by Chandler Medina, also Nick Weaver. Mr. Tripp giving some excitement to the Broomfield fans as you see great blocking there by the Broomfield line, opening up a huge hole. And then Mr. Tripp said, one guy's not going to take me down. And not that guy, but it's going to take me two. Two guys are going to have to take him down. Huge run, first down for Broomfield. Tripp has five carries today, 52 yards. First and 10. Eagles at the legacy 13-yard line. Don't pass. Don't do anything else. Run the ball if you're Broomfield. Here comes a blitz up the middle. And McLean is sacked at the 20-yard line. Somebody made a mistake there for Broomfield. Coach Davies is almost halfway up to the sideline. He's almost on the numbers. That's how frustrated he is on that last play. Tackled by Medina. Ball is at the 19-yard line, a loss of six. It'll be second down and 16 for the Eagles. Trip exits, and a receiver comes in. Bill, this is where you give it again to your playmaker. You have Penacucci man up on the wire on outside. Handoff straight up the middle. Down inside the five-yard line for Broomfield. And it was DJ Zissimos, the ball carrier. Well, that works pretty well too, Bill. That was his first carry of the day. Clock is winding down, 12 seconds and running. So that is probably the final play of the quarter, and it will be. Third quarter is over. Sets up to be an interesting fourth quarter finish. Our score, Legacy 20, Broomfield 10. Eagles have the ball first and goal when we come back. And 12 minutes on the clock. Fourth quarter, Broomfield trailing by 10, but they're knocking on the goal line of Legacy. First and goal at the three. This game has turned quickly. A 64-yard touchdown run by Alec McLean brought the Eagles closer. Then a turnover a few moments ago. Gave them the ball at the 25-yard line. And despite a sack in the middle of this drive, They've been able to get first downs, and here we go. North Stadium, Broomfield Legacy, backyard skirmish. And a touchdown here for Broomfield would make things very interesting. High school football. Panacucci split to the left. Gotta love it. Tripp is the tailback. Tripp has it, and he gets tackled at the two-yard line. And that was a big stick by Josh Borchers. Bill, this is mano e mano. This is all the time that you spent in the summer lifting weights, eating correctly, doing all the wind sprints. It's for this moment right here. Well, we said conditioning could yeah. play a role in this game. This is it. It is awfully hot. And down the stretch, we'll see who can last. Find something deep down inside of you and get these last two yards if you're Broomfield. 
Trip again up the middle. Peels it to the left. Touchdown, Eagles. Noah Tripp, a two-yard jaunt, and suddenly it's a four-point game pending the extra point. With 11-17 to go in the fourth quarter, and the crucial extra point, Travis Fries, the kicker. He has a field goal today and an extra point. Kick is on its way, and it is good. Splits the uprights, and our score, Legacy 20, Broomfield 17. A five-play, 21-yard drive, 2.23 off the clock, and we'll take another look at Tripp. Just a simple run to the outside, Tripp. The hole was supposed to be on the inside, but it was just congested. So what did he do? Go to the outside where there's absolutely nobody. Open space for Tripp to run into the end zone. And Bill, look, I know that I said earlier in this game, I was kind of writing Broomfield off. I'll admit it, I was. Because I thought Legacy would drive down on their first drive when they were close to the goal line and take it in, punching it to the end zone. But they didn't, they missed the field goal. Then you have a huge touchdown run there by Alec McClain, 64 yards there on a scrambling run. Then you have a turnover. And now, after that last touchdown by Tripp, a three-point football game, and there's 11 minutes to go in this game. Anybody, and I mean anybody, can win this one. Brian Tanagawa is the kickoff specialist. Hebel and Rodriguez await. And that will be an automatic touchback. Tanagawa pumped up as he sailed that one 65 yards into the end zone. So legacy and sophomore quarterback, Matt Lynch, tried out onto the field. One reason why I would never count Broomfield out in the first half of any game is I've seen too many Broomfield games, too much of Gary Davies, this team is not going to go away quietly in any football game they play. Well, Gary and I thought that if they got a break or two after regrouping at halftime, they could get back into it. 11-17 to go, fourth quarter. Three-point lead for Legacy. Lynch, outlet pass is complete to the wide receiver, Jacob Royer. Not sure who that pass was intended to. It was intended for Matthews. Okay, it was overthrown to Matthews, but somebody must have run a wrong pattern here. What well, actually is double is a double out route, Bill. And so what happens is the ball goes, just gets past the hands of Matthews and it's tipped right into the arms um, of number 63. So I mean, he, he got the ball. So I mean, so the it's a completion. To Royer, yeah, boy. First and 10 at the 31 yard line of Legacy. Lynch over the middle to Matthews. He gets it out to the 44-yard line. A 13-yard gain and a first down. So the legacy offense answering. A couple of completions. And Lynch continues his fine afternoon. Lynch is 14 of 19, 174 yards and a couple of scores. Now if you're legacy, you go back to what got you here. Go back to the counters. Go to the runs, but I am surprised a little bit that I don't see Partesian in the football game. Ball at the 45 of Legacy. Camerlo loses a yard. Good penetration and tackle. On the stop was Matt Hawkins. I'm looking on the sideline for Legacy, Bill, and I don't see Partesian anywhere, so I wonder if it's an injury, if he had to be taken back. No, there, there's Partesian. He's on the sideline. You know, you got to wonder, if, if the guy's not injured, then why do you take out your best player, especially at a time like this? Patersian, 153 yards on the ground today, 22 carries. He did fumble his last time, and so maybe that's why he's on the sideline. Lynch, outlet pass through the hands of the intended receiver, Dalton Royer, the younger brother of Jacob Royer. So that'll bring up a third down and 11. 9.54 to go, fourth quarter. Legacy 20, Broomfield 17. At the break, it was 20 to three Legacy. And Broomfield with a touchdown in the third quarter and one here early in the fourth. Now you have Legacy in an obvious passive situation. So it's going to be interesting to see 
which direction Matt Lynch goes to. You have three wide receivers up top, so we'll see what happens. Coming in motion is Van Valkenburg. It's man coverage, Bill. Jacob Royer. Royer tackled short of the 50-yard line. Good play by Blake Witzel. That could have gone for a long way. But instead, a short gain of five yards. Fourth and six, and Broomfield will get the ball back. On to punt is Trenton Johnson. Deep for the Eagles, Kyle Holbrook. Great. Six foot, 180 pound, senior defensive back. Great tackle there by Witzel. No pressure, and a high kick, and it will bounce out of bounds. We'll see where they spot it, around the 20 yard line. It'll be marked at the 19 and a half yard line. There you go. So 9.06 remaining. Both teams have their full complement of timeouts, three. And again, conditioning is gonna play a role down the stretch. On TV, it's hard to tell how hot it is, but let me assure you, it is scorching hot out there. And now the officials are discussing something. I'm not sure if there's a flag on that last play. We well, see them gathering at the 42-yard line. Sure, Bill, and just to give you an update on uh, the weather outside, it's still 93 degrees outside, so it has been hot and a little bit humid as the humidity is at 17%. So it's been hot the whole game, but now it's not about that. It's about heart. There's nine minutes left to go in this football game. Who wants it? That's a game where you find out who wants it. Who, who was outside running rather than watching cartoons? Who was, who was playing video games and who was in the weight room? We're going to find out right here. Well, if you play video games between workouts, that's okay, Justin. No, Alec no, McClain, no, no. <laughs> when you were in high school, you worked out 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mentally, I always worked out, Bill. That's how I got to see you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> After a couple of video games in between. <laughs> Alec McClain rushes, or rushed the ball today nine times, 133 yards and a touchdown. He's four of 11 through the air, 57 yards and one pick. And again, the officials are conferring. I have no idea what they're talking about. It's almost here. like a TV timeout. Maybe they're discussing where to go after the game to eat. Chili's, Applebee's, where are we going? You said Chili's, nothing chilly about today. It's true. But we thought this game would be close. And right now with 9.06 to go, we have a three point game. Legacy has not scored in this second half. So the defense certainly has uh, rebounded for Broomfield. Sure. And they were aided by a missed field goal in the third quarter. Now we do have a penalty flag. If you look on your far side, Bill, at the 40 yard line, there is a flag. So that might be what they're talking about. And the crowd is starting to get impatient as well as the broadcasters. Come on. We're a little restless up here, but, but if I'd, it's a penalty, you, yeah. it didn't look anything out of the ordinary. So why can't they just Mark it. Gary Davies, who's standing on the field on his own 36-yard line, had his arms out in the air as if to say, come on, what's going on here? And you know what this, this does? This is killing momentum it for does. Broomfield. It does. It does, exactly. I was just going to make that point, Bill. It kills the momentum for Broomfield. If you're Wayne Voorhees, you're thinking, hey, keep talking. I tell you what, we see these two teams again later in the season. Ralston Valley will be here, our final game in October. We also get to see Montbello take on Broomfield on the Broomfield campus. Okay, so we had a holding call on Broomfield. Okay. And a personal foul on Legacy. So uh, we'll see where the, it should be a five yard, five additional yards for Broomfield, I would think. Well, it's like a calculus equation here, Bill. So let's see if these guys can figure well, it out. Well, 15 yard personal foul, 10 yard holding. So I would surmise it's plus five for Broomfield. Well, it's easy for us, Bill, but. Oh, they're gonna move it back five yards. Are they? Well, oh. well they're mark marking off the 10. Okay. Now they'll mark off the 15. 
Well, why, right. why don't you just mark the five? Well, they want to make it official. <laughs> they, they are officials. All right, so here we go. North Stadium on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. 9.06 to go, fourth quarter. Broomfield trails 20 to 17, but they have the ball. And senior quarterback Alec McLean. Stodden is the lone running back. And he gets the handoff. And he can't get out of the grasp of Kyle Ray, senior defensive lineman. Ray checking in at 6'2", 225. Loss of one, maybe two on the play. Second down and 12. If I'm Broomfield, I might try to roll out, pass option play for the quarterback. McLean has shown he can run. You have Penacucci up top, at the top of your screen, man-on-man -man coverage. Why not give him a try? Well, and because, trip yeah. up the middle. Noah Tripp gets a first down. Determination and effort. Good heavens. Every time that I say they should pass the ball, Broomfield comes out with the run right up the gut and gets a huge, huge hole. Evan Law on the tackle. Great block it there. Put a hat on a hat. Great job by Broomfield to open up a huge hole there for Tripp to get the first down. Hebel also making the tackle. Tripp now eight carries, 70 yards. Eight minutes to go, first and 10 at the 37 for Broomfield. Downfield it goes, broken up, intercepted by Hebel. Hebel with the pick, avoids a tackle, and gets it inside Broomfield territory. A huge play by Hebel, and the third turnover of the day for the Eagles. Oh man, at probably the worst time of the game. Nice pass there by McLean, but even a better play there by number 21 there for Broomfield Simmons. to make the play. Simmons jumping in on the route. The ball's tipped up in the air, and it's hauled down by Drew Hebel, who takes the football, knows a little bit what to do with that, as he escapes what tackle there by Panacucci. Takes the ball all the way down to the 35-yard line. Great play. That was terrific field awareness by Hebel because Panacucci was coming in and could have laid a blindside hit on him. Yes. Which sometimes means fumble, but Hebel looked to his right and saw Panacucci coming. Now we have a penalty. Personal foul on Broomfield. Referee Mark Ussery. Looked like he was going to call it against Legacy. Oh, my. And Gary Davies can't be pleased with that. Add 15 oh. onto the return. Hey, guys, can we replay that? Uh, let's see if we can get a replay one more time just to see where, uh, the, where the penalty occurred um, as there's 7.43 left to go in this game. Oh, man. Huge, so, huge turn of events. Ten penalties for 80 yards for Broomfield. First and ten, Lightning. Ball on the Eagles, 23-yard line. If you're Broomfield and you hold Legacy to a field goal, that's not bad. Lynch to Petersian, straight up the middle. Petersian inside the 10-yard line. Stopped by Tacarante. And now Legacy in business. Bill, it's been the play. I'll just say it's their bread and butter. The counter play, a huge, huge hole up the middle as Maturja takes the football and yet again runs over the tackler, always finishing the run. I like the way that this guy's running the football. Legacy's in business, first down and goal to go. Let's see if they can punch it in this time. 168 yards on 23 carries for Maturja. He gets it again. Driving forward, shy of the goal line. But he should have been stopped around the five. He squirted forward for an extra two or three. And it will bring up a second down 
and goal at the two-yard line. The helmet came off for a Broomfield player, and that was number 50, Blake Witzel. So the rule is here now in Chassa that if your helmet comes off, you have to sit one play. Why is that important? Because Witzel is a stalwart right in the middle. If I'm Coach Voorhees and I see that a, a big player like uh, Witzel is out of the game, I'm running the football right up his gap, right up his hole. Ortiz the blocking back. Petersian follows him. Close, but not in. Yes, touchdown. The near side official said he got in. And so they convert the turnover into six points. It's legacy 26 to 17. 6.40 to go here in the fourth quarter. And Tate Petersian has had a day. Three plays, minute three off the clock. Covering 25 yards. Rainwater will try the extra point. Good hold, and the kick is through. So Legacy leads at 27 to 17. And we talk about turnovers, Justin. That was a big one. And it put the Lightning in a pretty good position, and they were able to capitalize. Broomfield was driving, had the opportunity to go and either tie the, the game or have the, the game winning score, turn over the ball, and then you give the ball right back up to Partesian, who, you know what? He just gets his arms over that line, and that's all you have to do. The nose of the football just has to get over the line. Great run there by Partesian. And you know what? They ran that last play right up where Blake Witzel would have been for Broomfield. So he had to come out because his helmet came off, and because that happened, you had a backup who was in, and he got blown out the water. Partesian scores on that last run. That is not an easy schedule as I look at the monitor. Some tough teams on there. Pomona on October 4th, that's the team that defeated Broomfield last week and come from behind fashion. But you know what, that's what you have to do. You have to, you know what, you have to go you have to go and beat these teams. And what a great way to start it off by playing a very tough Broomfield squad. Rainwater's kick bounces into the end zone. So 80 yards away from the legacy goal line, the Eagles will start out first and 10. Bill Rogan along with Justin Adams under the direction of today's game by Victor Seif. I tell you, our crew is doing a fine job under Pretty hot conditions. We're in the air conditioning, but the camera guys, and, and in that truck, it's about 400 degrees. <laughs> Definitely. It's so like a microwave oven. We can't say enough about the pictures that these guys are giving to you tonight and uh, today, excuse me, and they're doing an awesome job. So definitely great job by the crew. Alec McLean in shotgun. He'll keep and he'll go down. Kyle Ray who has been all over the field today with the sack. Almost makes you think that it was a, a, some, some sort of hiccup on that last play because he McClay wasn't carrying it out of fake like he did last time on the uh, quarterback draw. He just caught the ball and immediately started running. So very interesting on that last play. Loss of three, second down and 13. Well, you got to have a little bit of, you know, Urgency. A little bit of urgency. You were not talking about Oregon offense, but you have to go get your plays in a lot quicker. You're down by two possessions. McLean's pass is complete at the 31-yard line as the legacy players were grabbing at it. On the reception was Panacucci, and it's a first down. Once they set the chains, they'll restart the clock, and there it goes. 5.50 and counting, fourth quarter. Single coverage on the near side. Clayton bobbles, pass deflected, but caught for a minimal pickup by Panacucci. It looks almost like McLean is just rushing so much that he wants to get the ball and wants to throw it so quickly. Take your time. I know that you're down by 10, but you still get the ball first, then look over and survey the defense, then throw the ball to your, uh, your receiver. Panacucci, four catches for 54 yards. Trip. Double teamed on the tackle as he gets it across the 35 out to the 37 yard line. That'll bring up a crucial third down for the Eagles. 
third and about four. It's two down territory from here on out for Broomfield, Bill. So I don't know, Justin. They have three timeouts still. Ah, no, you, you got to go for it. You got to go for it. Again, the way that Legacy has been running this football, you don't want to give the ball back to them. You're under five minutes now. It's two down territory. Crowd making noise. Huge play here. McLean in trouble. Screen to the right. Zhang has it. First down. Out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Brought down by Weaver. Yeah, very good play called there by Coach Davies as we look. It's actually a double screen. Looks like it's going to throw right for a wide receiver screen, but you throw it out to, I mean, excuse me, to the left. Then you throw it out to the right on the swing there to Zhang as he catches the football. First and 10, Broomfield at their own 46-yard line. 4.29 to go fourth quarter. Again, Legacy 27, Broomfield 17. Eagles have won the last two years. Legacy looking to break that little streak. McLean, out pattern to Zhang, he has it. Brought down inside Broomfield territory at the 46 yard line. I should say inside Legacy territory. Clock continues to run. But he didn't get out of bounds, so the clock's still running. Second down and two. Broomfield wants to be quick, but not panic. <laughs> they still have three timeouts left as we approach four minutes in the ball game. Combs and Panacucci split to the right. Matchup to watch is at the top of the screen. Panacucci versus Simmons. McLean with time, throws on the run. It is incomplete. Intended for Combs, busted up by Nick Weaver. Weaver's had a fine day, the 5'10", 190-pound linebacker. Great play by Weaver as the ball is thrown to Combs, who has his hands on the football. But there you go. You see as the young man number eight, Mr. Nick Weaver, not give up on the ball. That's a linebacker there, Bill. Very good coverage there. And Combs, senior 5'8", 150 pounds. Small guy. Small guy, but that was a makeable play except for Weaver. Take a look at the field here. We have the band. Look at that. They got they got a little miss there. Able to withstand the heat. And a handoff, and it gets about a yard. They'll be short of the first down. On the carry for Broomfield was Jack Sherwood. And now it's fourth down, and Broomfield will go for it. I, I think we could clearly say that this is the play of the game. I would say so. Broomfield does not get this, it'll be pretty tough. Say mano y mano, you already ran the, the ball the last play. Here we go, fourth and one at the 45 yard line of Legacy. Trip up the middle. He got it. I think he has it. He got it. Brought down by Mitch Burdick. Well again, an ace formation, but you bring um, your fullback who opens up the hole, but to be honest, it's all desire here by Tripp, who just gets the first down by about a yard on the dive play. Tripp started the game at 190 pounds, probably down to 180 by now. Look at on the sideline for one of the legacy <laughs> players who's getting uh, treated for an injury. McLean scrambles. McLean's running toward the sideline and gets out of bounds after a five yard pickup. Smart play, smart play by McLean. McLean now with 97 yards on the ground. 2.50 on the clock. Check that, 134 yards rushing for McLean on 11 carries. But all the weights on these players, Justin, I think we can subtract at least 10 pounds. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's the way football is though. That's why it's a gladiator type sport, Bill. You play it in any type of weather, any type of conditions. It doesn't matter. It's almost as tough as bowling. <laughs> Get out of here. Or for you, as tough as baseball. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't say enough about just the way that these two teams have played. Exciting game. This is why it's the backyard brawl. Legacy versus Brewfield. Both teams are playing so well with a lot of heart. But let's see which team can hold on for the final 250. All right, Justin, if Broomfield gets a score, say in the next minute. Sure. Three timeouts left. 
If you're Broomfield, do you kick it deep or do you go for an onside kick? You go for an onside kick, and here's the reason why. We're not talking about college or the pro game, where if you get an onside kick and you miss it, and let's say the other team gets the first down, they're already a field goal range. Here in high school football, you have to at least get it to, let's say, the 25 or the 20. So I would say go, go and kick uh, the onside kick. And Broomfield has to score first. McLean, deep for Panacucci. He's got it. Inside the five at the two. Dante Panacucci with the reception over Michael Strafis. Good heavens. Michael Strafis had the perfect coverage there. He was playing zone. He was playing deep. As you see, uh, McLean throw a deep pass to Panacucci. But again, Panacucci, six foot four, a buck 76. The junior comes down with the football. There's nothing that Strafface can do except for try to knock it down. Unfortunately, he didn't. And now, Brookfield has the ball inside the five yard line. First and goal at the two. Combs to the near side, Panacucci to the far side, and the give to Stodden, the fullback. And he is in for the score. Zach Stodden, off right tackle. With players peeling themselves off the turf. This has been a physical game. And now Broomfield down by four. This is a huge extra point for Travis Fries. He's three for three today on extra points. He's also kicked a field goal. That was a 12 play drive taking 4.05 off the clock. Great ready answer there for Broomfield and the all important extra point. Kick is blocked. It was a high snap. And the kick was blocked. I'm not sure who got a piece of it. Might have been big number 63, Andrew LaGuardia. We called him the airport earlier. He looked like an airplane taking off there. Bill, that's all on Travis Freese. Even though the snap was a little bit high, it looked like Freese kicked the top of the football and not the bottom where you want to get a little bit of lift. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter who was in front of there. That ball wasn't going to make it through the uprights. So now if Broomfield does get the ball back, they'll need a touchdown. They cannot tie it with a field goal. Well, let's take a look at the replay of the touchdown. And it's just a give to the fullback who runs to the outside, you know, puts down his head, puts down his shoulders, drives his legs, and gets it to the end zone. So great run there for Legacy, I mean for Broomfield, excuse me, to get that touchdown. Mr. Zissimos on the score. I think it was Stodden on Stodden, the touchdown. Excuse me, that's why, that's why, my fault, but Stodden, excuse me. Excuse okay, me. the kicker is Brian Tanagawa. Will we see an onside kick? Also, Freese is there. Here we go. It's an onside kick oh. controlled by Legacy. Good hands on the reception by Caleb Martin. Linebacker. Martin with the shortstop-like hands. Who didn't know the linebacker has such hands? The junior. Great job by him. And let's go take a look at the, the replay of the odd side kick. And what you try to do is you try to kick the top of the football so that you get a big bounce. Unfortunately, that ball was kicked right at number 27. Mr. Martin, he takes the ball. You want to get that right high to, second bounce. Yeah, you want that you high second bounce, but he gets the ball, goes right to the ground. Now, Legacy, if they get a first down. Ball at the 50-yard line. First and 10, Lightning. 2.34 to go. And here's the handoff. And getting about two yards before getting dragged down is Jared Camerlo. And Broomfield will take a timeout. They have two left. Legacy has all three of their timeouts, but they're not going to use them. Again, I'm interested to see what happened to Partesian. He has, what, about 180 yards? 168 yards, excuse me, rushing. So I don't know where he's at, if he's injured, but at a time like this where you're trying to run down the clock, you want to get your best running back into the football game. Tate and Petersian, 24 carries, 176 yards, and a touchdown. Camerlo, four carries, 39 yards. Not too shabby there either. Get a chance to look at the, the Broomfield sidelines, and it's great to see that the fans are stuck around this whole game through the heat 
they had a chance to Maybe enjoy. they're just stuck, period. <laughs> that too. <laughs> they're stuck together with all the sweat and the aluminum benches. And stuck to the seats. This is a beautiful facility, and it's a beautiful day. But I tell you, Justin, I'm with both coaches, Wayne Voorhees of Legacy and Gary Davis of Broomfield. I prefer high school football on Friday night. Sure. And Broomfield schedule, the only easy game, I think, is your old school, Montbello. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> Second and eight. <laughs> Ball at the Broomfield 48-yard line. Lynch keeps it. Pass is complete to Ortiz. Ortiz grinds for a first down inside the 40-yard line. Good heavens. Alex Ortiz, through sheer determination, gets that first down. Well, and with 2.13 to go, that is a huge play. Number Justin, surprised they put it in the air? Uh, not really. Actually, number one, it started off by a great play there by Lynch to get past uh, the tackler wristed, who almost had him in his grasp, but they had a great pass there to Mr. Number 41 there for Legacy as he catches the football. And throughout desire and gut and heart, he gets the first down. Great play there by Ortiz. First and 10 Legacy, ball at the Broomfield 40-yard line. Hand off to Camerlo, off left tackle, grinds out about three yards before he swarmed under. Broomfield, will they take a timeout here? They should. They're letting the ball, the, the clock run. And Legacy will take their sweet time. I think what Broomfield is doing is that they're trying to um, conserve their last two timeouts for second and third down so that they'll get the ball back um, they get the ball back with about, I would say, what, a minute 20 or so, maybe a minute 10, which you can still do a lot. Well, Legacy has it second down and eight. Do they dare put it in the air again? Only way that I can see them putting it in the air is on a boot. Lynch hands it to Camerlo through traffic, gets about four yards before a tackle, and there's a timeout by Broomfield. That is their second timeout. They have one remaining. Minute 19 on the clock here in the fourth quarter. At stake, the Mayor Cup. Who is the mayor? Greg Stokes? Pat Quinn? Oh, the mayor pro tem. I don't know what that means. Oh, OK. The mayor is filling in for the mayor. Well, we have Kim Greeson, our executive producer, trying to explain the Mayor Cup to me. Is it Mayor Cup or Mayor's Cup? Mayor's Cup, well, okay. It's good, it's good to see the mayor filling in for the mayor. Where is the Mayor's Cup? It's a good question. Why is it not in here? It I should be in an air-conditioned <laughs> press box. <laughs> here we go, third down and a long four for Legacy. Huge play here, Bill. Legacy gets a first down, then the Mayor Cup is all theirs. Camerlo gets the handoff, and he is short. Good penetration and tackle by Blake Witzel. He has had a superb game. Timeout Broomfield. They have exhausted their allotment of timeouts. And now on fourth and three, what do you do here? You punt the ball away, I would surmise, if you're Wayne Voorhees. Oh, man, you're almost caught in no man's land here. You're around the 34-yard line. Now, if they had Kip Smith from a few years ago, this is a field goal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a field goal. And but the Kip score. Smith is now at Oklahoma State punting. Unfortunately, he's there. You know, if you're, you know, legacy, you want him here. But a little pooch kick. I'd like to pin him inside the 10-yard line if you can. Going back deep for Broomfield is Holbrook. So the pressure is on the punter, Trenton Johnson. Great shot there by our cameraman with uh, the near pylon. Like to see a different shots like that. This is what rivalry games are supposed to be all about, right, Bill? Close games coming right down to the end? Absolutely. <laughs> The long snapper is Logan Paulson, a sophomore tight end. So pressure on the snap. Johnson is the punter. Low snap. Johnson fields it nicely toward the corner, and it 
bounces in the end zone. Oh, but that was a good job just to field that punt. So the situation, minute eight to go. Legacy 27, Broomfield 23. And the Eagles have to march 80 yards for a touchdown if they want to win. A field goal does them no good. Alec McLean has been in these situations before. Six foot four, 190 pound senior. And that's what seniors are supposed to do. See if he can pull it off. Panacucci to the far side. Combs to the near side. Two safeties deep for Legacy. Take what they give you. They're giving you the middle. Take what they give you. Combs spins out of one tackle, but he's dropped for a yard loss. Minute to go and counting. You have to hurry up. You have to have a play call. There's no time to wait. You got to go. You got to go. If you're Coach Davies, they're leaving the middle wide open. Why not take a shot right You got to get a first down to stop the clock. 45 seconds left. They'll need a miraculous play somewhere along the line. Across the middle, complete. Oh, it dropped by Broomfield. Not sure who that is. Was it Riston? No. no. It was, can't see the number. Brad, Bradley Baldwin with the drop. Okay. The big tight end, 6'3", 210. Oh, man, he's going to be sick over that drop. On the coverage was Caleb Martin, guy who recovered the onside kick a little bit ago. At least it stops the clock. 36 seconds left. Third and 10. At what point do you just heave it up? Well, I don't know if Joe Flacco, I know he was just here. You can use a play <laughs> like that right about now. <laughs> McLean. Downfield. Complete to Patacucci. First down at the 39-yard line. Broomfield still on a respirator. 61 yards away, Hurry 29 up. seconds left. Hurry up, get to the line, you can spike the ball here. Looks Playing like yelling Bruce signals. Yeah, Broomfield's going to call a play here though. Clock starts. McLean with some time. Downfield, complete at the 45 of Legacy. First down, clock will stop with 18 seconds left. Wrist in the tight end with a huge catch over the middle. Now you have the opportunity where you could throw a Hail Mary right in that range for McLean to throw it down to somebody like Panacucci. They'll start spotted at the 44 yard line. He has the arm to get it toward the end zone. Clock starts, 13 seconds and counting. McLean in trouble. And he gets out of bounds. Brought down out of bounds and that'll be a personal foul penalty. Oh my goodness, with three seconds left to go in the game, personal foul. That will get the ball down to the 30-yard line. Kyle Ray with a mental mistake. 3.8 seconds left. This will be the final play, barring a penalty of the game. Broomfield needs a touchdown. And let's take a look at this play here. To me, Bill, it didn't look like a penalty at all, as you see. I McLean thought it was, Justin. I thought it was out of bounds. Scrambling, scrambling, and he's, he's, you know what? That's not a penalty. He's jogging towards the sideline. You cannot call it a penalty like that at this type of game. You cannot do that. Not at all. That's a bad call, Bill. That's a bad, bad call if they're calling a penalty. He wasn't out of bounds yet. He made initial contact, no, that, and McLean's foot was in bounds. He was still in bounds, Bill. You cannot yeah. do that. When I first saw it, I thought it was a penalty, but at the replay showed that he was still in bounds. Take, I tell you what, right. I think McLean may have slowed down in order to get tackled, hoping he would get tackled out of bounds. I think that was a savvy play by the quarterback. Well, See, he sees the guy coming, and boom. That should not be a penalty. You're that, correct. No, it's not a penalty at all, but we'll see what the official call will be. 2 fouls on the play. Got the holding call that. Oh, they're going to force both. 10 yard or 5 yard defensive holding, a 10 yard defensive holding and a 15 yard. So it comes down to this. Oh my. One play. Broomfield needs to go 19 yards. A touchdown they win. A stop legacy wins. Both sides on their feet. Riston and Combs split to the left. Panacucci to the right. And a timeout taken by Legacy. I hope your heart is pumping like mine is. Oh my goodness, 3.8 seconds left. 
ball on the 19 yard line. See, here's the difference Woo. between you and me, Justin. I'm pretty calm. <laughs> You're out of control and frantic over there. Well, hey. Hey, this gives us a chance. This game, huh? Real quick, I just want to thank our crew who put together a great effort today. Our executive director is Kim Greason. Victor Seif is our director, has been for many years. Will Nestle, the replay guy. Our cameramen, Alan Wardis, Miles Wardis, and Mark Olson. The utility man, Dakota Hudson. Our stat man, the always reliable Connor Shreve. And on graphics, John Shula. No relation to Don. So a great job by the crew. And I tell you what, Justin, doing these games, we're stealing money. That's right. 19 yards to go for Broomfield. 3.8 seconds on the clock. Now here's where that missed extra point is huge. They could have tried a field goal here. How about this for Legacy? This is where that missed field goal comes back to hurt. They have seven men in coverage. Four men will rush McLean. Dante Pinacucci, he's six foot four. McLean scrambles. He has to go for it. And he's down at the 10 yard line. Ball game. Legacy wins. I don't know why McLean ran the ball. But Legacy, they have won the Mayor's Cup and they snapped the two game winning streak of Broomfield in this series. Let's take another look at that final play, Justin. Well, I could tell you what McClay was looking for is that he was looking downfield and he saw all this green grass uh, because all the rest of the defenders for Legacy were in the end zone. So he took off and started running. But again, the pursuit of Legacy as they have done all day. Got after the quarterback, stopped about the 10 yard line just short of the end zone. Tyler hey, Baum the on the tackle. The teams will shake hands. We'll catch our breath. We'll have our post-game show. A thriller at North Stadium, our final. Legacy 27, Broomfield 23. Lightning now one and one. Broomfield drops to 0 and 2. Post-game show is next. Thank you. People who witnessed today's game between Legacy and Broomfield certainly got their money's worth as the Lightning with a 27-23 win over the Eagles. I'm joined right now by Wayne Voorhees, head coach of Legacy. And coach, you had a very good first half, but you had to figure Broomfield wasn't going to go away. No question. They're a very well-coached team, and we knew that they were going to make some adjustments on, on, in our you know, up, uh, running game. And uh, they did. We struggled a little bit, and we didn't finish plays for about the middle of the third quarter. What was the defensive strategy on that last play? Well, we weren't exactly sure what they were going to do, but we knew there should, they should throw the ball in the end zone. We were going to knock it down. We were going to try to pick it. We wanted to knock it down and end the game. Overall, are you pleased with their team's performance? Oh, no question. The elements out here was hot. Uh, kids weathered the storm. I mean, they played real well in the first half, and we kind of wore down a little bit, but we picked it up in the fourth quarter. Tayton Petersian today, 179 yards rushing. He had a touchdown. What can you say about this kid? I mean, he was just amazing out there today. He ran extremely hard in that first half, and he started cramping up in the second half, and that's part of why we were kind of puttering a little bit. But uh, he did a great job. We kept him off balance inside and outside, and he, he hit the holes in him hard. How important is a win like this as you go forward on your schedule? Well, it's extremely important. We've got to get these first couple out of the way, and then you start rolling once you start getting more and more confidence. So real proud of our kids. Well, enjoy it, Coach. It was a terrific high school football game. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay, now we bring in Tayton Petersian, who is holding the Mayor's Cup. Uh, how heavy is that thing? It's pretty heavy, honestly, M more than I thought it would be. Well, you're not only holding the cup, but you're, you carried your team, uh, especially in that first half today, 179 yards rushing. On a day like today, when it's scorching hot out here, do you enjoy having that many carries? <laughs> I do. It was awesome. I, I, without, I couldn't have done it without my line, so uh, shout out to them because they, uh, they helped me get there. 
Well, this is a perfect example of why training and getting in peak condition pays off. Yeah, definitely. Just drink lots of water. I was starting to cramp up towards the end, so after that, I was pretty okay, though. Your sophomore quarterback, Matt Lynch, he doesn't play like a sophomore, does he? No, not at all. He's a great quarterback. He's, uh, he's really good out there. He's a leader on the team. He, uh, he gets us in shape we, to do what we uh, got to do. During the game, Justin and I referred to the rivalry. A lot of the kids know each other on both teams. How satisfying is it that you don't have to listen to anything from Broomfield I, this year? I know. It's nice. After losing two years in a row, we finally got this win. So now we can brag, brag about it a little bit. Now, you had a big lead, 20-3 to early on. Broomfield came back in the second half. What does that say about Broomfield? They, uh, they fought strong, definitely. That uh, the second half, they came back. You know, uh, we kind of let up on them. But then we came back, and uh, we finished the game. I bet I can make you smile here. <laughs> Swimming pool. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. Okay, Tayton Petersian, senior running back. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank Great you. job. Thank and show, show that Mayor's Cup again. There it is. There we go. Don't take that home. It's not yours, <laughs> right. even though you won it. <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much. Have we bring in Justin Adams. Justin, I, I tell you. I thought that was mine. I thought that. <laughs> it's not yours. Uh, I tell you, we love high school football. Sure, and sure. today is a perfect example. You have two determined teams, neighbor, neighborly rivals. Kids know each other, fans on both sides good sportsmanship. There was no ugly incidents or anything like that, which you see sometimes in big games. Sure. But this is what high school football is all about, and it's so fun to be part of it. You know, and I would be honest, I thought this game was over early. I thought Legacy had it in hand. They were up, what, 20-3 to three in the third quarter, driving down the field. They had to settle for a field goal that they missed. Nothing told me, nothing at all told me that, oh, this is about to be a football game. Excuse me. You have a scramble play, a 64-yard touchdown uh, by Broomfield. And then after that, you have a turnover deep down in a in legacy zone. So now you're looking up, and the score's 20 to 17, and the game goes haywire. Great job by Legacy. The resolve that this team had. They wanted it, and they got it. But Broomfield, I I've seen them too many times. I knew they weren't going to go away without a fight. Came down to the final play. And the Legacy defense, you know, they were prepared for the pass, but they were also prepared for the run. A little bit of everything, and they did a great job today. They came out and established a run early, and that's what they had to do. We talked to Coach Voorhees earlier today, and that's the one big thing that he wanted was his team to establish to run. And not only that, but to also stop Broomfield from running. Now, Broomfield had a lot of yards there. You know, they had about, what, 150, almost 200 yards on the ground, but they did enough to win the football game. And in rivalry situations like this, that's what you want to do. Now, Broomfield disappointed. They're 0-2, but they've played Pomona. They've played Legacy, a couple of 5A teams. I think they're in store for a pretty good season down the road. Well, nothing to be mad about at all. You played two good teams. You played very hard, but now is the time to go and get over the hump and to get some victories. And that's what Broomfield will do. We will see them later on in the season when they play against Montbello, who's 2-0 currently. So they will have their hands full with that team. But I tell you what, Broomfield's going to give them a lot of heck when they see them. And as far as legacy is concerned, they needed this win. They couldn't go 0-2 because their schedule, as always, is brutal. Next up is Chaparral. They play them on Friday. You have to get a win like this. Now you have confidence, and that's important. You played against a team in Florida who has a lot of speed. Now you came back here and you beat your rival. Now it's time to beat another good squad. I think they could do this. Watch out for this team in the 5A playoffs, I'll tell you that. It's always fun for a team when they can win a trophy. It doesn't matter if, it, if it's a little trophy or a Stanley Cup-like trophy. But the Mayor's Cup, pretty shiny gold trophy. Nice to put in the trophy case. Not bad. You also have a little bit of indenting with your name on there on the bottom saying, hey, we won this game, and what a way to win this on the final play with the defensive stop. Final score, 27-23. Wonderful win by Legacy. I'm excited. I can't wait for the rest of this high school season. Unbelievable. We have three more games, and I hope that each one of those games can be just like the one that we saw here today. How about we wrap it up since we're melting? Yes, now would be a good thing. If we could get some, you know, some shade, ice cream, or go back into our air conditioned booth, that would be nice. <laughs> Tell you what, great job by the crew. Also, kudos to both teams. Once again, our final score, Legacy 27, Broomfield 23. For the entire crew, our stat man, Connor Shreve, my color man, Justin Adams, I'm Bill Rogan. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time on Channel 8.